in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Give us understanding, O oh Lord. We incline our hearts to your word. It will make us wise. Your word is giving us wisdom, teaching us how to walk like gods upon the earth. And tonight, Lord, we expose our spirits to the light of your word. Let there be transformations. Let there be paradigm shifts, O oh God. Help us, empower us, challenge us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, walk around to ten people, hug them, tell them happy Valentine. Happy Valentine. Whether you know them or not, Happy Valentine. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Once again, we welcome everybody inside and outside. There's a lot to do tonight. We're still on our series on financial dominion. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever more. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord. Strings, strings, strings. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord. Pray from your heart. It's a simple prayer. I love you. More than money, more than power, more than faith. Declare your love for him on this day. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord. One more time. Sing I love you, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. our love for you thank you for the privilege of access to light light that transforms light that builds light that changes Lord in the name of Jesus tonight we pray that you will help us we cry for the help of the Spirit open our eyes to the secrets of kingdom wealth grant us access to light that will change us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 35, 27. Mm. Last week, we started by talking a lot about, it was just an introduction. We ran through the course curriculum. Ah, what is all this on the screen? I thought we finished this whole Valentine thing. Please, let's get to work. No more distraction. It's time to concentrate. Psalm 35, verse 27.
Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Hallelujah. Last week I began sharing with us and I told us that it's very wasteful to give people information that they are not prepared to receive. Hallelujah. They will not recognize it they will not value it and it will not be profitable unto them and i did tell us last week that um, there are certain steps we need to take if we desire change and transformation in any area of our life especially our finance number one that we must recognize the need to be financially blessed hallelujah you must see the need you must see the evil of poverty you must see the limitation that poverty and lack brings upon the body of christ and even to the agenda of god i told you that recognition creates a sense of responsibility in fact there is a whole book about recognition by mike Murdoch. it's called the law of recognition recognizing the need breaks limitations so that you don't have limitations stopping you and then it creates dissatisfaction hallelujah and then the second point is that you go for knowledge. Having recognized that there is a need to be blessed, you go for knowledge. Hallelujah. And then number three, you take action. Consistent application of the things that you've heard. How many of us still remember all these things? Praise God. I'm just reviewing it quickly for the sake of those who were not here last week. If you were not here, the messages are available. Please get it and listen, listen and listen again. I don't know how many times I've listened to last week's message. And um, we discussed the concept of prosperity. And I, I said to us last week that prosperity comes from the word prosper. Remember? And it means what? To do well. Praise the Lord. To prosper means to possess a means and ability or power. Please, in this series, I want to be very, very slow, very straightforward. I don't want to bring any ambiguity. I just want us to get this as principle so that everyone will understand. Hallelujah. We don't just want a few people to understand. We want everybody to understand. It means to possess a means, an ability, or power to meet the needs of mankind, regardless of what those needs may be. And remember, we discussed five areas of prosperity. Can you remember? Number one, spiritual prosperity. Number two, mental prosperity. Number three, bodily prosperity. That's the prosperity of your health. Number four, financial prosperity. Number five, so I told us that for many people, listen, every time they talk about prosperity, they think money. Hallelujah. Now you can see that financial prosperity is just one of the aspects of kingdom prosperity. Now in the world system, they just say happiness, joy, and so on and so forth. You see a lot of that in business books, but everything we are discussing here is with a kingdom paradigm. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. I told us that to be prosperous spiritually means to be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and that you understand the ways and the principles of the kingdom. So your degree of prosperity spiritually is not just measured by being born again alone or being filled with the Holy Spirit alone. The degree to which you are understanding the ways and the principles of the kingdom is one of the indices that we use to measure spiritual prosperity. And then finally, the degree to which you are conforming to the image and the character of Christ. So when you say man is spiritually prosperous, you are not just saying that man is a church goer. No. That he understands the kingdom. Hallelujah. Number two, mental prosperity. We said how that it culminates in the soundness of your mind. How much your mind is well developed and deployed. 
Remember, I stressed last week and I'll stress it again that Christianity does not make people fools. Are you getting my point? Christianity does not make people just relevant as far as heaven and kingdom things are concerned. Christianity helps people to add value to mankind here and now. It says you are the light of this system. You give illumination and it says you are the salt of the earth. You preserve and you add taste. You add value. So the church is relevant even in society. We are not just relevant as far as speaking in tongues and falling down and getting up. And this is one of the reasons why in many regions of this nation, the church is not respected. They are not seeing our socioeconomic impact. They are not seeing us affect various strata of society. Hallelujah. I think I did a teaching there, Conquering Cosmos also. You can get the teaching where I told us that the gospel is not just a message. It's not just tract. It's an ideology. Taking the value system of the kingdom to the various mountains of human existence. Education, politics and governance, finance, um, religion, and media, arts, and so on and so forth. You can get the teaching. Hallelujah. So your ability to train your mind to build yourself and the ability to be free from worry and fear. How many of you know that there are so many people, they are blessed but they are afraid of their wealth because they are wondering, what if I die? All this kind of mental torture is not mental prosperity. You can be rich financially and be poor mentally. Praise the Lord. Bible says the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear but of love, of power and of a sound mind. Number three, bodily prosperity. We are not completely prosperous if we remain in sickness and weakness and so on and so forth. To be prosperous health wise, it means to be free from sickness, to be free from diseases, to be free from infirmity. And then it also means to be free from yokes and oppressions of darkness. All of these yokes, curses, all kinds of things that people inherit. Hallelujah. You can be free from it. And when you are free from that, you are prosperous bodily. The fourth one, and that's going to be the subject of our discussion, is financial prosperity. Say financial prosperity. It means freedom from poverty, freedom from lack. There is a difference between poverty and lack and today we are going to see it. Hallelujah. Poverty is a state of um, lack of productivity. There is nothing you are doing completely. And as a result of that, you do not have the ability to add value, whether by ignorance or demonic oppression or whatever it is. And then there is nothing that you can exchange for any kind of material um, blessing. But lack is a perpetual state of insufficiency, right? So someone who suffers lack, you have, but it's always not enough. Always. It's not like there is nothing. It's just always not enough. Hallelujah. So financial prosperity is freedom from poverty, freedom from lack, and take note, you must write this, and the effects that come with them. There is an effect that poverty does to the life. Listen, if poverty was neutral, there would be no need to attack the issue of poverty. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means if poverty did not cause anything to anybody, it did nothing just neutral like the air, we would not pay any attention to the issue of poverty. But we are, we are taking the issue of poverty personal because of what it causes to our lives, our families, the society, and the advancement of the kingdom at large. Hallelujah. Praise God. It also means having abundant financial supplies. I'm giving you the definition of financial prosperity. Having abundant financial supplies alongside the means to replenish and sustain it. 
if you do not have a means to replenish and sustain, you are not rich. It doesn't matter what you have. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So it's not enough to have abundant financial supply. Anybody can dash you money. Are you getting me now? Any well-wisher can love you and dash you money. You can inherit wealth, for instance. But the ability to replenish it and sustain that flow is what makes you financially prosperous. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto us. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto us. We arise. It's our time. We arise. It's our season. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto us. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto us everything that was lost shall be returned unto us everything that was stolen shall be restored unto us we arise it says arise and shine for your light is come tonight your light is coming in the name of jesus number five relational prosperity that's the last index for or dimension of prosperity in the kingdom. Having quality relationships that give you opportunities to express love, to express care, to improve yourself, to share and to impact lives. You must have an opportunity to bless people. You must have an opportunity to interact, to be a blessing to people. There are many people who are financially prosperous, but relationally they are very poor. They walk alone, they have no friend, nobody to bless. Nobody can say it's because of this person I was blessed today. Hallelujah. So that kind of money, that kind of blessing, that at the end of the journey of your life, please bring some more people. If there are more people, they can just come and sit. At least they can leave the front rows. They can just share maybe a few of them. Or a few of you, some of the leaders, your leaders, you can just go there so that some people can come to the front. Hallelujah. A few people who have the opportunity, please come and sit down. Praise God. How many of you, lift? please look at me. How many of you have seen people who you know maybe in their lifetime maybe now they're in their old age they were blessed but they didn't lift anybody have you seen people like that they didn't bless anybody nobody went to school because of them they didn't feed anybody they didn't help the poor there are people like that and so maybe while they were working nobody got a job because of them they didn't bless anybody some of them were politicians. Their environments were not developed. And these people come down and in their old age, they are left alone. Because they did not invest in the life of anyone. Relational prosperity is so important. Because by and large in your life, that's one of the things that will matter. Are you getting me? There are some people who will never be poor in this life. Because of the, those who have been raised and lifted because of them. Hallelujah. For instance, my children will never suffer in this life again. You see that? Whatever price I've paid for them, even if you hate me, you will love them. One day you will just look at them. I'm sure maybe my daughter will be made head girl. You know all this kind of solidarity, whether she's qualified or not. See, there are, you can create a, a platform for generational blessings. Look at what we inherited from our parents. Praise God. They didn't do anything. They just produced enemies. And you just got up and your uncle said, you are the son of who? You say, I'm the son of this person. You say, that's right. Because of something that happened when you were not there. That means relationships matter. Are you getting my message now? 
your, your quality of relationship with, there are some things that you will get for free on account of relationship. Hallelujah. Some of us, because of the relationships that we are making with certain people here now, you may never need to pay for certain things in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One day, someone will come to a showroom to buy the car. And maybe it's Ken that is the owner of the showroom. Ah! Sam, I remember you. He said, come in. The inner one, not that one outside. There is the inner one, the holy one. The Holy of Holies. And he says, please, pick anyone. He says, see, it's been a while. And Sam is so blessed that when he takes it, he will go back and deposit money in his account and say it's a seed. So it's not a product of insufficiency. There is a realm like that. Poor people never know there is a realm like that, but there is. Hallelujah. So as you're sitting down right now, I want you to imagine your two, three, four, five children standing and saying, Daddy, you better hear what they are saying. We are coming. <laughs> the day is Valentine. Love. Love means responsibility. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't ever let your children look at you one day and say, what happened? Is it that you didn't hear what others were? What happened? And you know, we are preserving all these messages in the future. They will play it and you will see yourself when you were small. Your child will see you and say, I thought you said you, you were not born again then. That's you there. Why are we still broke? You know, then our parents lied to us. Some of them said they took first all through. Some of them said all kinds of things. Eventually we said, this, your story is not connecting. You know? Why are we still suffering like this? <laughs> parents, we're sorry. relational prosperity now look at me for those of you who can choose to neglect quality relationships i'm just this is not a discussion but i just feel it's important i point it because there are certain people that have this disdain and disregard for people you're not as fine as me you don't speak english as me you are not doing this. I'm wearing a designer's. You are wearing something else. Praise the Lord. And we create all of this stratification. Tonight, God is speaking to you. This is your first message tonight. Repent quickly. Hallelujah. Because let me tell you something. That sister you see sitting down, she may have only one dress, but there is something happening inside her. The Bible says the vision in the end, it said, do it, tarries. It will not speak at the beginning, but in the end, it will speak. This is why we, I respect and I honor people so much, including these children. Some of you just look at them and nod. No. Value relationships. Value relationships. Many of our parents are crying for help today and there's nobody to help them because they neglected everybody. Some of them were the only ones to go to school and they turned and looked at the illiterates and said, you are not my class. And then the tables turned. This life. Everybody has his shell. The Bible says time and chance is a mystery that happens to all men. So whether you take advantage of your opportunity or not, God is just to turn the table. And one day it will get to somebody you've been laughing at. And maybe when you met the person, the person was a drunkard. But by the time the table would have reached, you would be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, with sufficient knowledge to take advantage of that opportunity. Value relationships. Some of you, you cannot keep friends for five, five days. You are fighting with everybody. You just believe everybody has a problem. And you won't adjust. Hallelujah. There are many of us that will not forgive people that hurt us since they were in secondary school. You just turn and you saw the person sitting in Koinonia and say, God, what is this person doing here? Because when you rise, see, if you don't believe in people when they are nothing, when they rise, they will forget about you too. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? relationships and they brought a crippled man who dashed monkey banana who would take that crippled man to the to the palace 
Relationships. Everybody say relationships. Relationships can give you what money may not give you. There are people on account of relationships, they got jobs without interview. You've been seeing your roommate because they are humble. You don't know who their father is. You're just speaking against everybody and feeling your this and that. And one day you may go to their house and find somebody there that your own father has been trying to access his office. See, let me tell you, relationships are powerful. This is a very powerful message. I believe God just wants me to drop this right now. When I see old women and very old men, the question I ask is, where are their children? Two, where are their friends? Because they had an opportunity to take advantage of their youthful life. Are you following me now? Many of them did not take advantage of it. And a man, a man at 75, coming to move around in a house and say he wants to be a gate man. I said it last week. For 75 years, where were we, his friends? No, it's, it, it's impossible that all his friends will be failures. You mean nobody could help him? That is coming now to be a gate man to take five or ten thousand. I'm not insulting the occupation. Are you getting my point? I'm saying that there, there is always opportunity. Many of us now are begging for things we would get for free because we neglected people years ago that are in position to bless us now. There are many of us, maybe if you would have seen me 15 years ago or so, some of you will look. And say all kinds of things. No. Value people now. Especially when they are hearing what you are hearing too. Look, let me tell you. The word can give you an inheritance. Never conclude on any man who is getting revelation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are many wealthy people today. There are people in the presidency. There are multi Bill Gates had classmates. True or false? All of these wealthy people had classmates. Some of those classmates are still begging today. And Bill Gates makes overnight what some of them may never make in the lifetime. Is it that he's so greedy that he cannot bless them? They are giving millions to charity. Can they help their friends? Neglect. This is a message to someone this night. Today is Valentine's Day. Let me just press it in. Some of us have a habit of this disdain for people based on class or whatever parameters we have love people when you see us say turn around hug one another and all of this we're doing it for a reason we're doing it for a reason everybody say opportunity remember my message on activating breakthroughs the ministry of destiny help us cherish very valuable relationships I'm not saying just hop in and out of any sinner's life and say they said we should have relationship. No. The Bible says have no business with the unfruitful works of darkness. Unfruitful. That means it doesn't bear fruit. There are some relationships that bear fruit. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean the people have to be perfect. I'm not talking of love relationship now. I'm just talking of general relationship. The people may have their differences just like you have your own too. Correct? People are not working with us because we are perfect. There are some of you who hate me. It's just that you like what I represent to the body. And you are receiving it in peace. Praise the Lord. Value relationships. Write it. Write it so that even after 10 years, if you are looking at your note, you will see it. Value relationships. When you see people, greet them. Greet them. Don't say I'm a pastor of so 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 ministry. So what? Huh? Greet people. You get up in the morning, you pass people. Good morning. Huh? Don't look and say, you know, when I was in, in, in SS3, that's when you were writing common entrance. So what? Let me tell you, if age used to give food, some of our parents will be resting by now. Relationships. Hallelujah right financial dominion what is financial dominion we defined it but let me define it again the ability to totally conquer lack to conquer poverty to conquer financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring is financial dominion financial dominion is the ability Notice that word to 
totally. When you understand that, you find out that it's a journey for us. The ability to totally conquer lack, poverty, financial hardship, alongside the effects that they bring. And let's see some of the effects that they bring. Fear. 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 Number two, insecurity. Many poor people are insecure. The Bible says money is a defense. It says a rich man's words are harsh because he believes he's defended. But a poor man uses entreaties, always begging, a life of begging. Greed. Many people are greedy because they have not attained that state of financial dominion. Greed. What if I give? Where will the money come from again? So someone can be dying and you can join people to say, ah, ah, you are dying, what happened? Whereas, you can rush the person to the hospital. But you are saying, me too, what I have is not much. Greed. Self-centeredness. Some of the effects that financial hardship brings. Self-centeredness. Many people are self-centered. And part of the reason, not all of the reason, but part of the reason is this life of insufficiency self-centered they don't think about anybody just me myself what i have is not much you know if it was much we would have shared but now that it's more please don't disturb me i can pray for you self-centeredness unrighteousness unrighteousness many people have gotten into sinful and shameful things because of money They've entered wrong relationships, wrong marriages. They have compromised, given themselves freely and cheaply. They've been involved in diabolic things, all kinds of things because of poverty. When you pay a man and say, go and kill another person and I will give you 100,000 or 200,000. That's terrible. Unrighteousness. Say in the name of Jesus. I will attain financial dominion and be free from all these things. Yeah. There are many people who live perpetually under fear. Will the landlord come and kick me out? And we live in a time when a landlord can escalate the price of his rent to twice or three in places like Abuja. And now a family is stranded and there's almost nothing they can do about it. Hallelujah. Tonight we are going to be looking at the anatomy of God's economic system. Mm. Grant us light, oh God. The anatomy of God's economic system. The internal workings. How does this thing work? Financial prosperity is not a mystery. It's not magic. There is a way this thing works. And tonight I pray that God will open our eyes to understand. Hallelujah. The anatomy of God's economic system. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Please let me have two people. I like using people for example. My brother, ah, you sat in front. Sitting in front means you have volunteered one here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, every time we examine anything, any subject in the Christian faith, you must realize that oftentimes there are two dimensions. There are two perspectives. Are you listening to me now? There is the world's economic system. Everybody say the world's economic system. That means the way that people in the world run their economy. This world, this system, cosmos, it has its economic system. The way people get money, the way people multiply it, the way people become rich, they have their system. But the kingdom of God also has an economic system. And if you are a citizen of the kingdom, then you should understand how the system of heaven works. The Bible gives us a picture of this. It said, lay 
lay up for yourself treasures where? So he began to give us a picture that there is a heavenly system that interacts with the earth. That a man can be in the earth realm, but he can make heavenly deposits. Are you getting my point now? This is Jesus speaking. Lay for yourself treasures. And he tells us the limitations of this world system. He said thieves can come. All kinds of things can go wrong. But there is a system that has another mode of operation. And so tonight we want to examine this system. Everybody say heaven's economy. Say it again, heaven's economy. Many of you are shocked because we've not been taught in church. Either because we have been made to believe that when you teach people about prosperity, it is carnality. But by now, I know that every one of us here hates poverty. Is that true? And we're not going to allow anybody just sit down and mislead us and make us believe that teaching about pr prosperity and the place of kingdom wealth is, is, is carnality. No, no, it's not at all. At all. There is a lot that the kingdom of God cannot, the, the advancement of the kingdom of God can be crippled when there is no finance. Hallelujah. So there are two economic systems. What's the first one? What's the first one? The world's economic system. And there is the second one. What is it? Hallelujah. Now, the fact that it is heaven's economy does not mean that it is not operational in this earth. Are you getting my point? Because this is where we are now. So we take the principles of the kingdom and we walk with it in this earth realm. Bless you, sir. Hallelujah. The anatomy of God's economic system. The first thing I want us to examine is the role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom. Why does God bless? This is, this is one of the things you must understand when you are exploring the economy. Don't talk about money. Don't talk about business. Don't talk about all of these things. The first thing you need to know is why does God bless the believer? Why do we have to be blessed in the kingdom? What is the role of wealth and prosperity as far as kingdom advancement is concerned? Why does God bless us? When a herbalist, when a man goes to meet a herbalist, and he says, Baba, I want charm. Say, for what? Say, I want to be rich. The man gives him conditions. Is that true? He said, remember why we are blessing you. And here are the conditions. The day you compromise, that money disappears. Agreed? Agreed. And the man goes back, and then things begin to work for him. There is a system. So why does God bless us? Because if you do not know why God prospers people, you will misuse prosperity when it comes. Are, are you seeing why lots of people misuse prosperity? They don't know the purpose of prosperity in the kingdom. So they get money and do lots of crazy things. You know, I, I, I told you, I think it was last week. I don't know if I said it here or maybe during the final year or workers retreat. Any one of them. Hallelujah. I watched a documentary how that the son of the sultan of Brunel or so. I think one of these very wealthy billionaires. Hallelujah. His child, I think if I, if I remember rightly, about 22 years old. When he was celebrating his 22 year old birthday, the father gave him 250 million dollars as a birthday gift. The wealthiest man of God in Africa is worth about 190 million US dollars after years of operating this world but now one son who clocked 22 years listen to me i want to challenge you tonight the father just gave him money and the boy didn't know 22 years from a rich family will he buy food in a restaurant a man whose empire is built with gold and the boy didn't know what to do so he went to go and rent a yacht and he brought in half of hollywood stars half Praise the Lord. Half. Just to come and enjoy. Drink beer. Waste away. Become soul hunters. 
and he wanted to become friends with a popular one of these secular musicians and he knew that going to go and meet him the way a poor man a poor man uses entreaties and he knew that that way would not work so they measured his size and he made a shoe for the musician made of diamonds and presented it as an offer to become his friend do you think it will work at once at once it worked at once now listen that's a lot of money spent on vanity and the truth is compared to the about maybe 16 billion or thereabout that his father had that's a chicken change that's pocket money are you getting what i'm saying don't just start fantasizing because this is the world system there are, of course any man that does not give his life to Christ, no matter what you have in this world, you are not advancing the cause of the kingdom, you must be advancing another cause. Everybody is advancing something. Whether you know it or not. Are you getting my point? So why does God bless us? Never forget this in your journey to financial freedom and financial dominion. The day you forget it, God is not entitled to bless you. Please follow me. Because the rules that govern kingdom wealth are very strict your violation of them will cost you so much number one the role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom why god blesses us number one to live a comfortable life i shared this during the kingdom wealth summit in 2010 number one to live a comfortable life that's one of the reasons why god blesses us in the kingdom Let me say it again. God is not glorified in our poverty. Say it after me. God is not glorified when I'm poor. Say it one more time. God is not glorified when I'm poor. Now say God desires that I prosper and live a comfortable life. Say it one more time. God desires that I prosper and live a comfortable life brothers and sisters there is nothing wrong that you own a house that has a worship room with sound system all around that is automated that wakes you up in worship and a door that recites a scripture before opening is not vanity don't just clap oh. many clapped many clapped like this this is not to make you fantasize what is wrong with just sitting down and having options and saying in the next two weeks i don't want to eat this food and not feel guilty and not feel bad hallelujah what is wrong with being able to live a comfortable life and send your children to good schools good schools with very good standards hallelujah there's nothing wrong living a very comfortable life you sleep in peace you wake up in peace god wants us to live a comfortable life now many of us have not had the experience of that comfort maybe just a few of us but i'm telling you god wants you to be comfortable say god wants me to be comfortable i want you to believe it no matter how you have suffered say it. god wants me to be comfortable you know, some of us have suffered so much as you are saying it, you are saying, ah, God, God wants you to be comfortable. Hallelujah. Because when you are comfortable, let me tell you one of the greatest benefits of prosperity. It gives you options. It gives you the ability to choose. Hallelujah. Poor people never have the opportunity to choose. Whatever comes, they go with it. Hallelujah. It gives you options. You can choose. And in that choosing, you will now choose according to the way of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So to live a comfortable life. Number two. This is very important. Why does God bless us in the kingdom? To finance the cause of Christ on the earth. To finance the cause of Christ. To advance the kingdom. Never forget this. This is one of the reasons why God, one of the major reasons as a matter of fact, why God
blesses men in the kingdom. The world may have their system of operation, but when you are a kingdom citizen, if you want to be open to the prosperity of God and to command financial dominion, then you must understand that one of the major reasons why God blesses us in the kingdom is to advance the cause of Christ. What is the cause of Christ? Soul winning. To build the house of God. To finance the kingdom. Finance soul winning. Bless the lives of, of the vessels that he's using to increase and improve people. To better the lives of people. Hallelujah. Very important. Now I wrote something here and I want you to write it. It's God's plan for every believer to be part of providing financial supplies for kingdom activities. I'll say it again. It is God's plan for every believer to be a part of providing financial supplies for kingdom activities. This is so important. I know that there are kingdom financiers. Those who are called and anointed into this apostolic ministry of providing major financial supplies for kingdom activities. But can I tell you, part of every believer's responsibility is to contribute financially among other reasons in the building of the kingdom. Say amen if you believe that. So financial dominion is not a wish. I told you it's a, it's a principle. It's a path. It has a formula. If you can walk with it, then God will honor you. Otherwise, you are not entitled. As simple as that. You may not go to hell, but you are certainly not going to be eligible. It is God's plan for every believer. It's God's desire for everyone seated and hearing me. And even for the online community, it's God's desire for everyone to be part of advancing the kingdom. Listen, we are still going to discuss other sections, but you must come to a point in your life where out of every resource God gives you, there must be something in it that goes for the kingdom. It's not just a special um, a, un until you are prompted and all of that, that it is part of your life that you're going to provide financial supplies for the kingdom. It is very, very important. Hallelujah. That's the second reason. The third reason why God blesses us in the kingdom is to reveal the love of God to a dying world in a practical way. To reveal the love of God. And God so loved the world that he... That you must give your love expression in this dying world to reveal the love of God to a dying world in a very practical way to help the poor to help the hungry to be committed in charity to be committed in community projects and nation building all of these things are part of the reason why God blesses us in the kingdom that means God's blessings it's not just limited to the house of God. First the house of God, but also to give the world an opportunity to see that God is love. I wrote here acts of love and kindness that moves beyond religion, beyond culture, beyond gender, and beyond social status. When you come and build a school for a community, for instance, and you say, everyone in this community will pay the teachers for 10 years. Teach these children, whether you know them or not. That's revealing the love of God. When there are all kinds of charity activities and you bless people, you help the needy, you provide for the poor. The Bible says, he that gives to the poor lends to the Lord. How do you borrow a rich man money? Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. How many of you have seen maybe one of your uncle that is very, very rich 
and maybe at a point he needs 1,000 now and he said, please give me 1,000. Will you give him? Very quick, said, who knows? Maybe as he's giving you back, he won't give you that same 1,000. So when a rich man says, please borrow me, very quickly, say, I, I have. He said, no, no, let me just say, mm, it's my own, I have. Because you know that when he's giving you back, he'll say, ah, you out of this abundance, so let's just take this one and you just look and you see that it has multiplied ridiculously. So the Bible says when you give to the poor, it's the same thing as God saying, borrow me money. I will return it to you. Ah, I will do. Goodness. God, every rich man blesses according to his ability. That means he first looks at his ability. And from that revelation, he will bless you. So the Bible says, my God, this is Paul speaking, shall supply all your needs according to his riches. Praise the Lord. These are the three major reasons in the kingdom why God blesses us. Let's review it quickly. Number one, to live a comfortable life. Number two, to advance or to finance the cause of, the, of Christ on earth. Use the word advance, not finance. Advance, advance. The financing is to bring that advancement. I will build my church. He says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Praise the Lord. When it was time for him to build the temple, they called on people and from the abundance that they brought, the tabernacle was built. Do you know, listen, let me prove this thing to you um, scripturally. The Bible says when Israel was about to leave Egypt, God made Egypt to give them money. That was the first wealth transfer we see in the Bible. Are you following me now? This, we are going to come to the issue of wealth transfer. So we see the first wealth transfer in scripture. That overnight, someone who had oppressed people for 430 years, he gave them money. But many of them did not know. He gave them sheep and oxen so that it can sponsor their journey. Are you following me? That journey is like the journey of the believer to the promised land now. So financial resources were given. But because they did not know why God blessed them, later on he would demand of them that they bring from that resource. Because they did not know, they used the money to build an idol. The gold and everything. Eventually, they built an idol. That's what a lot of people are doing. Every time you do not know why God blesses, you will build an idol with it. Are you following me, please? This is a very important teaching. I want you to pay rapt attention. So God blesses you. So that you can advance the course of the kingdom. Wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement. It's a trust. Never forget this. Wealth in the kingdom. Wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement. It's not an accomplishment. You satisfy these rules and God trusts you with it. Please understand. That's why there is no boasting. Any rich man in the kingdom that brags unnecessarily does not understand the operation of the kingdom fully. Trust. And he gave unto one. Please come. Three of you. Look at me. The Bible says, he gave unto one what? Five talents. Did they beg him for it? He gave them. He gave them. He gave them. According to their several abilities. Right? After a while, he came back and demanded accountability. Write this word down, stewardship. Please sit down. Write this word down, stewardship. This is, this is, this is a word that you must never forget if you want to be blessed in the kingdom. There are no owners of prosperity as it were, financial prosperity. No. No. There are stewards that God commits wealth to for their personal blessing and to be a blessing. The day you stop being a steward, you are not entitled to the wealth of the kingdom. Everybody say, I am a steward. What does it mean to be a steward? A caretaker. A caretaker. Sheba katala bakuria da baladaba. That means your greatest pursuit in the kingdom 
is to become trustworthy. Worthy enough that God can recommend you and can trust you. There are some people who will never be rich. No matter how much they pray and fast. Even if they enter one gallon of anointing oil and come out. You know why? They are not trustworthy. In this day and age, let me tell you. In this prophetic season of authentic wealth transfer... God is looking for distribution channels. God is looking for houses, men he can trust. That you say, Lord, you know, I, I told God something. I said, Lord, I know that many people have given in the kingdom, but I want you to trust me and see what I will do for your kingdom. And I mean it. I'm disabusing many of our mindsets right now about prosperity because there are many of us that until now, all we are thinking about is just ourselves. Let me make quick money. Hammer sharp sharp. Marry one lady quickly. Have children. Build a house. Enjoy my life. And go back to the village by December. And say all you suffering ones. How far? God has been faithful. If that is your mindset. Forget about kingdom well. Forget about kingdom well. That you know that Lord. I'm a distribution center. Trust me. Trust me with insight. Trust me with resources. Trust me with capacity. He gave out of trust. He gave one five talent. That means he saw that the one with five talent was the one who could manage it well. Then the one with two and the one with one. And after a while, his point was proven to be correct. Because the one with one talent didn't do anything with it. The one with ten multiplied it and he collected. You see... I said something years ago and I was accused of it. I said in this wealth transfer, there are believers who their wealth will also be transferred. Those who do not understand and recognize that the purpose of wealth is to build the house of God. In this country, there are believers with houses, estates, and there is nothing they are doing for the kingdom. They are not doing anything for the kingdom. Only to get angry and talk, fly around a church is saying we have a convention. And maybe the total cost for the convention is maybe three or four million. And that man is paying business class 2.5, right? First class 2.5. And in one week, he would travel four or five countries, spend more than 10 or 15 million, and come back and sit in the church and just keep watching. When you do not take up kingdom responsibility, you will never be trusted with the wealth of the kingdom. Are you, are you getting something right now? Greed, self-centeredness is an enemy to financial dominion. Are you getting blessed? Many of us do not know that we are the ones who are stopping God from being a great blessing for us and to us because of our greed. We are self-centered. There is nothing, the kingdom, I can never go to a place and not find a way of participating financially in the advancement of the kingdom. There are many of us here, where there is nothing you have done for the kingdom. I'm not talking about offering. Offering is, is because we were religiously raised to believe that you come to church with something. Do you have the kingdom at heart? David sat down and thought to himself, he said, how can I be in a royal palace made of gold? There is nothing I want and my God does not have a place. He said, although you, you are in heaven, the earth is your footstool. You do not need a house but me. I must build you a house. The tabernacle of God cannot be outside and a multi-millionaire is inside. There are many men of God living in houses that are worth hundreds of billions and the carpet in their church, the carpet in their church that is 20,000 cannot be changed. Don't tell me you have passion for the kingdom. Are you understanding what I'm saying? A man will buy a car of 14 million pastor. And a church is struggling with rent. How much is the rent? 500,000. What is it to just come and slip it in and say, Pastor, 
I am a kingdom citizen. I may not be a member of this church, but I know why God blesses me. Quietly, without chorusing around, create a special chair for me close to the pastor. Are you an elder? No. Are you a pastor? No. Who are you? I gave 500,000. Let me show you why many people, so that when you see a man that God is blessing, don't be angry. There is a price they have paid. And it has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with gender. Are you understanding what I'm saying? This is a reorientation. We're in the school of prosperity examining how the internal workings of the blessings of the kingdom. Notice I've not mentioned anything business. I've not mentioned anything money self. I've not mentioned entrepreneurship because that's what many people, this is the problem I have with a lot of success and business people. They just buy cut every of these things and they tell people open a shop, look for 50,000 or 100,000 and it will work. You think it works like that? We will shout for your glory with everything with everything we will shout for your praise so what is your heart for god lord i want you to bless me god is saying really do you understand my conditions listen brothers and sisters let me shock you prosperity does not just respond to prayer alone there are many people who believe that just by praying, uh-uh, your heart is a great issue that must be examined. There are so many people who are so greedy. Every time they talk about money, let me show you something. Read Psalms 122 in NIV. Can we get NIV? Psalm 122 verse 9. I found this scripture years ago and it, it hit my spirit. I said, goodness, my God. Psalms 122. Last verse. Verse 9 in NIV. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? God is challenging us in this place because he wants to bless us. I prophesy to you, it's your season. In the name of Jesus. What kept your family members will not keep you. There are some of us, this is the prayer that our parents have been praying for years and say, Lord, will a Savior not arise? Will a Savior not arise? Is this how we will die? Will a Savior not arise? Many of us have prayed and fasted because of the things happening in our families. The Lord brings salvation for us in the name of Jesus Christ. While they prepare to, to pull that up, I want you to understand that every time God increases you and your heart tends towards wickedness, he can withdraw them, the blessings. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why after 20 years, a man can be blessed, but after 20 years, he can be so reduced and even be begging. Hallelujah. Everybody read Psalms 122 verse 9. One to read. For the sake of of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Is that in your Bible? That means, Lord, I'm not just seeking all these millions and billions. How many cars can you enter at once? Even if you have 50 cars, you can't pieces your body to drop in different cars. You can only enter one. Is that true? So if it's just for yourself, you just need a cash flow of a few hundreds of thousands and it will do you no matter how extravagant you are but for the sake of the house of the lord i will seek your prosperity lord i'm seeking these billions i'm seeking these thousands so that you can sponsor a tv program for 10 years quietly and say man of god stop thinking about money you concentrate on praying look at how many struggling ministers with an authentic message from god but there is no voice given to them. Hallelujah. Because of prosperity. Because of your house. I will seek your prosperity. 
What do you need one billion for as a person? Bill Gates is living off 5% of his wealth and he's still a billionaire. He's giving 95% of the wealth to build a Melinda Gates Foundation. Yet with the 5 billion, he's still a billionaire. Do you know why God searched around the body of Christ and did not find many worthy believers and he chose to use cyrosis until the believers are prepared? There is no, not, there's none on record that I know. There is no man of God or minister of the gospel that I know who is a billionaire in dollars, not one. The closest is Kenneth, Kenneth Copeland. The only person that I can say has gotten there, he's not exactly a man of God, is Peter J. Daniels. The man with the largest real estate company in Australia. What is the problem? We are here shouting massive kingdom wealth transfer and there is nobody. God TV. God TV. Hallelujah. God TV. They are looking for about 6 to 10 million dollars to complete a project for the house of God. Look at the people who have been blessed. 6 to 10 million. Brothers and sisters, are there no people on earth that can give a prostitute 10 million for one night? Dollars. I'm not talking of Naira. And it does not shake them. All these rich men go for extravagant outings and buy one wine. One. One wine. About maybe 10 or 20 or 50 thousand dollars. One wine. And they will order cartons of it. And believers are here begging, please. Begging Psalm 22 verse 5. Give 22 dollars, 5 cents. All these kinds of suffering. Something is wrong. It's not, listen, we are not mocking them. But I believe that our generation will do something that has not been seen. You better believe it. I believe strongly that this generation will do something. We are truly this omega generation that will do something that will keep the world at a standstill. And they will see how we are so separated from the blessing. Are you getting blessed? Forbes, 100 billionaires. The top 100 people in the whole world. There are just about maybe 5 or 6 people who are professing believers. And that's the Walton family. Sam Walton and all the other people. Most of the other people are atheists, heterogeneous religions coming from wherever. Where is the church in this? Members of the Illuminati and all of this and all of that. There is poverty in the body of Christ. Even what we celebrate that has turned the head of some people. Let me tell you, that's not prosperity. It will be shadows compared to that which is coming. Believe me, it will happen. It's part of the prophecies that must happen before Christ comes. And I will shake the heavens. And I will shake the earth. And the desires of nations will come. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, said the Lord. Hallelujah. There will be a shaking. This is what is happening. The global recession is a shaking. So God is positioning us. Don't ever belittle yourself. We live in a world where every time we are talking like this, you say there are other people. Do you know what God can do with you? He told Gideon, you are a mighty man. Oh, thou mighty man of valor. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? Let me show you what God does. Every time there is perpetual misuse, perpetual misuse of his blessings Hosea chapter 4 verse 7 is someone getting blessed tonight you will thank God for this truth that you are hearing blessed are the ears that are hearing this don't trivialize it at all hallelujah everybody read want to read as they were increased so they sinned against me Therefore, I will change their glory into shame. This is why after 30 years, a man that probably... Listen, there are some things that are not caused by demons. It's how God's technology works. Hallelujah. Solomon came to a point where he said everything in the book of Ecclesiastes, everything that my eyes saw, I desired. Everything that in such that insatiable lust for just everything. Money is a wild animal. It can tear you into pieces. 
if you don't control it. That's why the Bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them. Hallelujah. People make all kinds of nasty statements. People say all kinds of things because they believe they have money. They can hire police. They can do all kinds of things. Praise the Lord. I want you to know that this is the reason why God blesses us. Never forget. Every time you get money, just know that this is why God has blessed me. There is a portion of this that is for me. There is a portion of this that is for the kingdom. Hallelujah. If you understand this, you're already in, in a very great, a, a landslide uh, uh, progression towards financial prosperity. Spiritual laws of wealth and abundance. Now, please pay attention. We'll start talking about the laws now. We've seen why God blesses us. We want to see how he blesses us. Spiritual laws. Remember in our course curriculum, when I read it for you last week. Sorry for those who didn't come last week. We, we read out a course curriculum. Just, just follow. We're really sorry. I forgot to read it. Spiritual laws of wealth and abundance. Even so, come Yeshua, come. And even so, come take your bride away. Take us into new realms, oh God. How my soul longs to see your face. My Lord, even so, even so, come Yeshua, come. What are the laws? There are spiritual laws, brothers and sisters, that govern the manifestation of wealth in the kingdom. Every herbalist, look at me. If you see this brother today, come my brother. If by next week, Koinonia, this guy just comes with a what? Range Rover Sports, maybe. Or whatever it is, just, just keep that one. Let's, let's hurry up. Praise God. And he brings a car and he just comes with some kind of regalia and everything. You can just look at him and say, my brother, in one week, where did you go to? You won't ask him what he did. He will say, where did you go to? Somehow, we associate wealth with the spirit realm. Once you see a man that mysteriously rose up to wealth, they say, no way. Leave this guy's money. Oh. This guy went somewhere. Not he did something. He went somewhere. So we, And that somewhere in our mind is that he went to a herbalist or a shrine. Is that true? So if you believe that consulting a herbalist can make you rich, it tells you that there are spiritual laws. Hallelujah. Bless you. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. Please. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. Shiba katala bakatama. This was a condition for prosperity. And it shall come to pass if thou will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to do what? observe and do there is something to do there are laws to live by it's not automatic it's not the issue of receive prosperity there is a dimension where prayer comes in but i want you to know that there are laws everybody say there are laws that govern wealth and abundance in the kingdom say one more time there are laws that govern wealth and abundance in the kingdom let me tell you, if you do not know these laws, I don't care whether you have, you have PhD in finance and economics. You will struggle eventually in your life and you will not experience true prosperity. There are many people who believe that all it takes is just go to school, go and get a job, do this and that. Wonderful. We'll still talk about that. But let me tell you, prosperity in the kingdom first starts by your compliance to spiritual laws just thank you hallelujah praise the lord say spiritual laws oh there are laws 
there are laws. Just like there is the law of gravity. Whether you believe it or not, it's there. If per adventure you climb a building and try to fall, that's when you will know that there is a law. Hallelujah. There are spiritual laws. The first spiritual law is the law of tithing. The law of tithing. Leviticus 27 verse 30. Leviticus, excuse me, 27 verse 30. Everyone, please, can we read? One, two, read. It is the Lord's and it is holy unto God. How many of the tithe? All the tithe. He says, all the tithe of the land. Your tithe. What is your tithe? The word tithe comes from the word a tenth. It is a tenth, ten percent of your income. Please write. Ten percent of whatever blessing God br brings to your life. Now because we operate an economy that has to do with finance, money, currency, because of currency now we no longer carry bags of rice on our head to come and drop and just say, this is my tithe and all of that. Hallelujah. The Jews were an agrarian people and because of that, that was why all of these things were written. But for us now, it's just your finances because it represents your highest value and sacrifice in terms of your physical impute and the reward you get from it. 10%. Hallelujah. Now listen. I'm going to say something that sounds very controversial. There are people who preach that you should give 30%, stretch your faith and give 30% and 40%. Because it is money, nobody will refuse it. But that's not, the Bible says obedience is better than, there are other opportunities to sow into the kingdom. Call tight what it is. Are you getting my point? Now, there are a few times where God gave certain people customized instructions that were, were just a product of their relationship with God. You cannot carry your personal experience and lord it over people. Are you getting my point now? There are churches that they make people bring 50%, 100%, bring everything and say, um, there is first fruit. There are lots of other things. We'll discuss it. Your tithe is 10%. You can give the 10% and give every other thing. There are many avenues. We are going to discuss that. But listen, I'm telling you now. Your tithe is your 10%. There is a reason why God said 10. He would have said 2. Or you would have said 21 to 50%. It's your tithe. Choose anyone. It, God is very meticulous and he's exact. 10% is your tithe. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12. Another word for the law of Titan is the law of open heavens. It's the spiritual law. One of the spiritual law that is responsible for opening your heavens. Not just financially, but even financially. Somebody is changing tonight in the name of Jesus. The law of open heavens. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8. Will a man rob God? question answer it answer it for yourself will a man rob god it's an encouragement it was a question but use it now to challenge yourself hallelujah put your name there where a man is one to go will joshua selman rob god some of you as you are saying it god is saying you see this is what has been happening there are many robbers of god in the house of god many robbers of God. And please listen. Some of you hear this and you think it's some gimmicks by pastors to collect your money. Let me say something. Everybody is an authority somewhere. Are you getting what I'm saying? A professor is an authority in his field. Not everywhere. Don't listen to garbages by intellectuals. They are not spiritual people. They don't know how heaven's economy works. 
You cannot go and meet a man who is not a spiritual man and you are telling him to help you analyze the principles of the kingdom. The Bible says the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit. It doesn't add up to them. There are many people, because a man is sound intellectually, does not mean he has spiritual understanding. There are many politicians, many people who insult pastors, genuine men of God, and say all kinds of things because they think that because they have political knowledge, it means they have spiritual knowledge. And they take politics. Get out! Leave us in the house of God. We stay with God day and night and we understand. This is our area of grace. Let us function. Don't let any politician just come in and all kinds of people who are misleading people in the body of Christ. Being manipulated by demons and stopping people from entering their breakthrough. I know that there are abuses here and there. But let me tell you the truth. Any man that is not faithful in tithing is scripturally entitled to poverty. Scripturally. The Bible says, he that breaks the hedge... The serpent is permitted on legal grounds to strike. Are you listening to me, please? So beware. There are people who all they do spiritually is they analyze, they downgrade spiritual things and just look at it from an intellectual plane. And when they add one plus one and they don't know how it will become seven, they say it's wrong. It may not be wrong. Just say you do not understand. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? And there are many of us, especially some of us, as young as we are, we have already imbibed this religious mindset to scrutinize and criticize everything we don't understand. We bring it into our religious mold. And once we find out that it doesn't add up, rather than with all humility, seeking to understand. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the wise men saw the star. Is that true? When they saw the star, they knew that this star was spectacular. It was leading them somewhere. They didn't have sufficient knowledge to understand what it meant. But with all humility, they followed the light. And that light brought them to Jesus. There are many people who need to humble themselves. The recession has humbled a lot of arrogant people who laugh and scorn at the church. Let me tell you, individuals may fail, but the church of God as an entity is progressing. It cannot fail because Christ is the head of that body. Hallelujah. The law of tithing. Will a man rob God? Yet he have robbed me. But he say, wherein have we robbed you? This is where you have robbed God. In tithes and offerings. Verse 9. This is a consequence. This one is not the cause of the law. This one is the cause of disobedience. Are you getting my point now? Ye are cursed with a cause, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10. Bring ye how many? All the tithes into my storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. So God wants that there be abundance, that there may be resources to carry out activities in my house. And God says, if you have done your own part, prove me and see the things I'll begin to do in your life. Number one, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven. Hallelujah. Number two, if I will not pour you out a blessing. Number three, Okay, a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11. Number three, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Number four, he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Your ground is anywhere you sow. It could be your job. It could be your marriage. It could be whatever it is that you're doing. It says, and he. So that devourer is not a thing. It's a spirit. It's a living being. And he, that devourer, shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young before its time. There are lots of people with all kinds of premature happenings in their lives. Things that you know, this one is the signature of the devourer. Thus said the Lord, verse 12. And all nations shall testify 
they will call you the blessed of the Lord. He said, for you shall be a delightsome, a well-desired land. Seven prophetic blessings for being faithful in just one law. One of the laws. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? You must make up your mind. Open your eyes tonight, brothers and sisters, and see where the devil has been robbing you of your financial prosperity the first thing that happens is that many believers say if i give where will i get another one question how did the first one come your tithing is a proof of trust hallelujah if you cannot bring out 10 percent of your money and say lord i trust you I come because I love you and I come because I know that your word is true. If you're not a faithful tither, don't get angry at God. Many of our parents get angry. Maybe they are collecting two or three hundred thousand or four hundred thousand and they look forty thousand to go and give a pastor. Are we stupid like that? Don't turn our head. This is a problem. They think they are giving a pastor. They think they are giving the man of God. Are you getting my point now? What you do not know, listen. The Bible says, if you do this to the least of my people, you have done it unto me. When you come and give in the house of God, please listen to me. If you give tithe that is for the house of God and the man of God eats the tithe, it's between him and God. God, God will not hold you accountable for it. You have done your own part. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Oh, but there is faithfulness. The, the, the rewards of faithfulness are endless. There are many of our parents struggling. They've been trying to build one house for 10 years, 20 years. When the house is almost completed, somebody will do something from the village, everything will be destroyed again. The moment, have you seen families like that? The moment money enters, everybody gets sick until the last time finishes, then everybody will be fine by themselves. That's the devourer. Brothers and sisters, that's the devourer. There is a place that your tithe pays or there's a role that it plays in the kingdom. You can choose to believe what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Could it be that many of us have been robbed of entering these dimensions of blessings? Some of us go and tell our parents these things in love. There are some of us here that are parents. We have children. We've not been practicing the law of tithing. I want you to know that this is one of the irrefutable spiritual laws. Even unbelievers give 10%. They don't call it tight. But almost all the multi-million and multi-billion corporations dedicate at least 10% of their money and they say it's for charity. Are you following me now? If a believer plants during dry season, there is every tendency that you still suffer, although he's a believer. Is that true? If an arm robber comes to plant during rainy season, the rain will come because he aligned with the season and the principles that agriculture brings. This is how lots of unbelievers, they are interplaying kingdom principles and it's working for them. Tonight, God is giving you an opportunity to make a decision. Hallelujah. We are still going to continue, but... While you are seated, in the next two minutes, I want you to pray and say, Lord, grace. I've not been a faithful tithe. Don't bow your head. Pray. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. There are many of us, some of you outside, wherever you are. Please, this is, the, this is a serious business. Your children, this, this adherence to these laws will determine whether... 10 years from now, 5 years from now, you will be part of those crying together with your children or you will break certain cycles in your family. Some of us, as you are hearing this right now, you may be young, but God is counting on you to break some chains. Enough is enough. Pay the price now. Pay the price now. Lift your voice and pray. And say, Lord, grace. Say, Kata, ba, 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 ba. I have robbed you and I am sorry. I take responsibility, oh God. Many of us have, have yielded to fear. You are not supposed to, to bring your tithe because you are afraid. God is a loving God. 
he said i know the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord they are thoughts of good and not of evil how can god rob you god is no man's debtor god does not rob men please lift your voice and pray cry for grace grace oh god from today i make up my mind that i will be a faithful tighter not out of fear not out of religion but out of revelation i see that this is a key i will teach my children how to tight i will teach my workers how to tight i will teach my family members to tight i will guide them and help them to be faithful in tithing so that the heavens will be open no power in existence will stop the law of tithing if you insist and say lord i'm ready to comply god is more than able before you begin to abuse god and insult him and say he's not helping my family i'm opening your eyes tonight to see the loopholes Business without tithing will end up in failure. Ministry without tithing will end up in failure. A corporation without tithing, a, a non tithing family, uh, they are entitled to financial hardship. Thank you, Jesus. Look up. Praise the Lord. Let me say a few more things on tithing. Listen. If you are a business owner here, I want you to know that tithing does not just apply to a person. Hallelujah. When Abraham went to go and rescue Lot, right? When he came back with all of the blessings, it was not only him. He was representing many people. The Bible says in Genesis 14 that when he came back, he took a tenth of everything and brought it to Melchizedek and the Bible says Melchizedek blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham, son of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. And his destiny opened up. The great Abraham. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we do not owe God one naira as a ministry in tithing. The finance department, they all is a standard rule in this place. Before we do anything with finance, the tithe comes out. When we started the school of ministry and missions, even that, no matter what we are raising money for in Koinonia, the tithe must go to God. Are you understanding this? So don't just think that these are things we are just saying. You must make up your mind. If you cannot commit to God your 10%, then it means you do not trust that he's able to bless and multiply you. You want to be a billionaire. You know what is the title of 1 billion? 100 million. You think you can carry 100 million and just go and give like that? We are going to pray when we are done. One of the graces that we must receive is the giving grace. Hallelujah. The giving grace. The giving grace there are many people that do not have if you don't have it is not human to carry money like this and take to the house of god and just go and drop no there is a grace that was a grace that was upon the macedonian church that they gave even beyond their limits it's called the giving grace many of us do not have it we are too greedy everything that enters your hand you spend it on every kind of thing sickness disease any other thing but god hallelujah your tithe what is the storehouse very quickly let's clarify the issue of this storehouse once and for all what is the storehouse because the bible says bring the tithe where to the storehouse the house of god so what is the storehouse really in scripture there are three places that qualify to be called the storehouse number one god's first idea of a storehouse from the bible 
is the primary place where you receive your spiritual nourishment are you getting me the place where you receive your greatest spiritual nourishment for many people is their local assemblies because you know they are there they are committed they are workers in the church and then they are giving number one the primary place where you receive your spiritual nourishment anywhere you receive your primary spiritual nourishment primary there means the major spiritual nourishment that is building your life that becomes the storehouse number two it could be a ministry not necessarily your ministry but a ministry that is committed to the works of the kingdom please get this a ministry that is committed genuinely to the works of the kingdom there are people for instance that so in they are tied into maybe benihin ministry kenneth copeland ministry and it's not their local assembly as it were are you getting my point now but it's a ministry that they believe their vision and they are given into soul winning building and equipping believers listen if you pay your tithe to a dead place where the activities of the kingdom are not happening it can affect your harvest it's in the bible it's the same thing as a farmer carrying a seed and going to throw around in a soil that is non-productive the, the seed will not produce not because it is not good but a poor soil killed it number three now and these ones are there are special situations but I'm going to talk to you. The vessel or the storehouse can also be an individual. A man of God. Listen please. I want you to listen very well so that you don't confuse what I'm saying. A, it can be a man of God. A vessel. The Bible says know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But there are conditions. Are you getting me? Now there are ministries that the spiritual fathers or spiritual leaders in the Lord. Are you getting me? I'll give you an instance. Like Bishop Oyedeko, for instance. He is the president of a ministry. Aside from the tithe of the ministry, he has his own ministry. Are you getting me now? So, they can they take this tithe. They don't just go maybe to redeem or Kenneth Copeland. That vessel that they are drinking from on behalf of the people. Are you getting my condition now? And they honor them with their tithe and they speak blessings. Abraham went to who? Melchizedek. Melchizedek was not a city. He was a man. And he brought his tithe to Melchizedek. And Melchizedek pronounced a blessing upon him. Hallelujah. There are lots of ministries, for instance, around. That by the grace of God look up to us in ways for spiritual direction. And they've committed themselves they come and they tighten koinonia here. I don't even know. This is what they are doing. Are you getting me? But I'm saying whether of these three, there are special conditions for the third to occur. Because there are many men of God who just sit down and somebody in church just corner a few people and say, I qualify to be the storehouse. Come and bless. I've explained to you that the condition where a person can be a storehouse. But the house of God is where you must bless. Is somebody getting blessed? These are the benefits, the first law. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Let me touch on one more law and then we'll round up this night. Next week, we'll talk about the natural laws and we'll talk about wealth creation, the principle. The second law is the law of seed time and harvest. The law of increase, the law of giving. Luke 6, 38. Luke 6 38. Everybody read. One to read. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together and running over. Shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that he met. Without it shall be measured unto you again. This is a spiritual law. 
Genesis 8.22, please. When Noah came out of the ark, the Bible tells us that he took seven unclean animals and two clean animals. Is that true? That, those are the, that's how the animals entered the ark. Seven of the unclean, two of the clean. So when he came out, the Bible says he offered two, two of every animal. That means he offered and finished all the clean animals. How they came back is a technology we must still find out in the Bible. While the earth remained, verse 21, 21 please. Let's start from 21. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour. This was Noah's sacrifice. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. 22. While the earth... That means this is a law that is valid for as long as the earth remains. Seed time and harvest. Cold and heat. God joined it with other laws so you can verify if it's still working. Cold and and heat summer and winter day and night shall not cease has cold and heat stop as summer and winter stop as day and night stop then it tells you the law of seed time and harvest is still at work are you getting me the day these three stop that day know the law of seed time and harvest has stopped but from the day they gave birth to you till today the sun still rises sets according to our perspective here there is still cold and there is winter that means the law of seed time and harvest is still at work very very important what is the law of seed time and harvest really what is it simply put the law of giving is a law that this earth please listen very very important this earth functions by giving and receiving. That whatever it is that you give, there is a technology that is able to multiply whatever you give and return it to you. Now, I'm not talking about money. When you give love, you are practicing the law of seed time and harvest. According to the law of God, love will be multiplied and it will come back to you. Are you getting me? When you sow seeds of kindness, kindness will be multiplied and it will come to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means whatever kind of harvest you want to see in your life, you sow the seeds for that harvest. Oh, this is so important. This is not seed faith. I'm going to teach you on seed faith. We'll come to seed faith. I'm teaching you the general law of seed time and harvest often called the law of sowing and reaping be not deceived god cannot be mocked whatsoever a man sows that shall he reap if you sow to the flesh you reap to the flesh those who live by the sword they have sown that seed they will die by the sword are you getting what i'm saying this is a very powerful law that means Everything that leaves my hand does not leave my destiny. Everything that leaves my hand goes an, as an investment into my future. And the Bible says it will find a way of multiplying and coming back to me. That means for all the givings you have done truly, if you have not received the harvest, God cannot lie. Expect it. It is coming. Are you following me now? Very, very important. Now, there are many kinds of givings and offerings that come under this law. Let's run. Number one is offering in the house of God. What you call offering. The seeds that you sow when you go to the house of God. What you call offering. That's one way to practice the law of seed time and harvest. Deuteronomy 16, 16. Please, let's rush. So we have to pray. Our time is gone. Offerings. That you bring the house of God. Deuteronomy 16, 16. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God. In the place which he shall choose. Hallelujah. 
It says, in the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacle, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Hallelujah. There is an admonition in scripture that every time you are coming to appear before the Lord in the house of God, as much as God has blessed you, you should not come to the house of God empty-handed. There is a blessing that follows your offerings and your givings in the house of God. Please never give just because it's offering time. And now you don't want to feel bad. There are lots of people that come to the body of Christ. They come to the house of God without a predetermination. They just come and they say offering time. And I know it's not easy to just plan, but you can train yourself. Hallelujah. And part of your preparation for coming to church is that this is an offering that I'm bringing for God. So that when it's offering time, you're not just looking. 100 naira, you return it. 50, you return it. 20 naira, even the 20, you return the new one and carry one. Say, Osha, please. You just dump the thing there and say, Lord, at least you. So, no, 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 no. Let your heart be in what you are doing. When I finish teaching you these principles, you will respect any man that is blessed from the kingdom. And you will see why God can punish certain people when they open their mouth, castigating blessed people in the kingdom. Are you seeing now? You see that it's not child's play. There is what you must do. It's not cheap. It's not free. Offerings in the house of God. Number two, I call them kingdom investments. Your givings for the building of the Lord's house. Kingdom investments. Every other seed and commitment that you make so that there will be a smooth running of the activities that happen around the house of God. I call them kingdom investments. Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. kingdom investments not necessarily that maybe like project 10,000 like this that could be but you can sit on your own and say Lord I'm committing myself God is blessing me there is 50,000 coming in for me maybe 5,000 or 1,000 I'm going to commit myself that this is for kingdom investments this is for building of the Lord's house this is between you and God you see Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, please and please, don't you think this is some spiritual gimmick to bring out money from people? Satan doesn't want the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to be blessed. There are natural laws we are going to talk about. But your natural laws have failed already if you don't comply to the spiritual laws. Every unbeliever pastor, they have commitments to various spiritual houses or places of worship is that true whether they are business people or whatever once there is a project and they hear sometimes even without anybody coming they run because they understand the implication i want you to see how unbelievers play these laws and the way they are building a very great financial future with it commit yourself never be in a place and you don't find something let me tell you See, eh? years ago, I used to play the keyboard for a ministry. A man called Reverend Emmanuel Amechi. They were part of the team of people that had the opportunity to preach to Abbas and Joe and all of that. Now, they came and they started a ministry in Joss, Pastor. I used to go and play keyboard for them. Listen, nobody ever gave me one naira. Are you getting me? I would trek from my house. Maybe sometimes after I come back from my local assembly, I will go there and I will play keyboard for them. And I will play with all my heart. I was responsible for my finance and everything. That's the law of seed time and harvest. Are you getting me? Kingdom investment does not just mean money alone. Your participation. Every worker in the house is participating in the building of the kingdom. This is practicing the law of seed time and harvest. It's not just your finance alone. The Bible says you reap where, it, it didn't say you reap where you sowed, it said you reap what you sowed. So even if you are not here tomorrow, that thing will still bless you. 
Hallelujah. The only thing I remember getting in that ministry was one bottle of Fanta, I think, and then one cassette during the launching of the man. That was all I ever got. It's my own keyboard, though. Pastor, I will carry it, maybe bike or sometimes from my pocket. And I will go there, but I was doing it joyfully. God is my witness. I never complained once to say this man. It was even my parents that were saying, this, this, this boy is a small boy. What is all this one again? But I was doing it joyfully. But God was watching. This is what happened to David. While he was tending his fathership, God was seeing him and saying, I'm seeing the heart of a king in this shepherd. Many of us, when you see certain people, you don't know what stories and experiences made God to vow some vow about their lives. There was something Abraham did that made God to vow that in blessing, I will bless this guy. These are the kinds of people that the Bible says he reproved kings for their sake. Are you listening to me? He suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. How much are you committing yourself? How much are you committing your resources? Brothers and sisters, kill greed this night. Kill greed this night. I saw lots of things in my family that I did not want. And I made up my mind that I was going to change a lot of things in my life. I have seen this thing work in my life. I have seen this thing work in my family to the glory of God. And I have seen this thing work by the grace of God in this ministry. As a ministry, let me tell you, we have done some dangerous things. I will not begin to say it here. Maybe as we proceed, we may say a few of them. When you see God blessing us and there is an open heaven, find out, find out, there must be something working. And this is what we are teaching. Hallelujah. Kingdom investments, the building of the Lord's house from today. Make up your mind. Once money comes, don't just start jumping around and say, oh, I'm happy. Time to chop, time to enjoy. Uh -uh. Think kingdom. There is a reason why God has blessed me. I am a steward. Part of this money is for me. Part of it is for the kingdom. I skip one thing. Let me help you become efficient in paying your tithe. Get envelopes. Get envelopes. Get envelopes and just put them close to you. So that when money comes, before any devil will come and confuse you, you have put your tithe quickly. Put it and remove it, seal it, and take it away from your presence. Many of us have had tight of three months piling close to us. One day the thing gets tough, you just open one. No, many of us do a lot of funny things. And the fact that God kept quiet about it is because He knows we are humans and He's allowing us to grow. A day will come, you will receive the gravity of that disobedience. Don't touch your tight, it's holy unto God. This is not to threaten you, this is just the truth. It's how the law of the kingdom works. Hallelujah. Two more and then we'll pray. First fruits. Many people have asked me so much question about first fruits. I'll just touch it briefly. This is one of the ways that we can express our givings. Now, um, look up. What is first fruit? In scripture, the concept of first fruit, it was ordained by God. It was practiced by the Jews. It was not just part of the Jewish law. The concept of first fruit, listen, this is the spirit behind the activity. If you don't understand it, even those who practice it do it religiously. Or they do it because some churches have register, all the members. If you drop your first foot, you sign. Later they call you and say, ah, elder, what is wrong? This is March, you have not dropped anything, they didn't pay you. And it so happens that many churches, the employers and the employees are in the same church. So, and the boss is part of the working committee. You can't lie that they didn't pay you. You see, all those kind of things. So let's get it very straight here. Does first fruit exist? Yes. But listen, is first fruit compulsory? No. The same way saying is bathing compulsory? No. But not bathing creates consequences. Correct? Are you getting me now? Your first fruit is a symbol, is a prophetic way of honoring God and showing Him, I'm sorry that he's first in your life are you listening to me first in your life
that when you take your first fruit, and now I'll, I'll explain it in details, and give the Lord and say, Lord, I'm honoring you. Maybe the first profit of your business or maybe your first salary as a worker. There are different ways that people practice first fruit. Others, maybe January, there are churches and people who their salary for January, they take it to God and everything and all of that. It's, it's not just about giving God money. It's about telling God that you are first in my life. Are you getting the concept now? So if you just bring money and just throw and you are frowning around and say these people say very wicked people. I hate January. Every January is the time they eat our money. No. Understand the spirit behind what you are doing. Bless you. If you do not practice first fruit, it doesn't mean that you are not going to enjoy the blessings of God. It's just that there are certain dimensions you may not be able to enter. As simple as that. Are you getting me? Your tithing, your giving, your kingdom investments, they all have their inputs to your financial life. It's like saying if you don't do extra moral, will you pass jam? You know, that's the question. It depends on many factors, the kind of school you went to and all kinds of things like that. But it will always be an advantage and it will add to you spiritually. First fruit. Please, never allow anybody to put you under force and pressure and try to threaten you with a curse. To say, Sam, I'm waiting for your first fruit. If by next week you don't bring it upon this altar, I will stand on this altar and provoke a God. Please, don't let anybody confuse you. There are many people, there are many men of God that are bullies. They bully members with all kinds of prophetic prophetic messages and they get it very serious they say i saw a vision a cause was coming upon the church and those who did not give first fruit they were affected and everybody just runs around and say carry and give him please just give him less rest everything that is not done out of revelation will not profit you are you getting what i'm saying i'll just leave it there so first fruit is very important as you grow in your giving and you see the benefits of giving you see that's why our walk in the kingdom is by faith. There are many people, their faith cannot carry them beyond certain things. So don't be angry if both of you are blessed and you see somebody making certain progress. There are certain laws he's practicing. Please, are you getting me? I don't want to go into so much detail. I'm just giving you what we need here. The last one that I'll talk about is the concept of what we know as prophet's offering. People have suffered because of this thing. Let's clarify it once and for all. Is there such a thing as prophet's offering? Are you blessed tonight by what I'm teaching you? Praise the Lord. Two scriptures. 2 Kings 8 from verse 8 and 9. What is prophet's offering? Now look up. In ancient times, listen please. In ancient times, prophets or oracles of God as we know men who communicated the counsel of God be it from the Levitical priesthood and all of that because they ministered in the house of God perpetually are you getting what I'm saying now they had no opportunity to participate in agriculture and other things other secular activities things have changed now but they did not have that opportunity are you following me now and so there were ordinances from God that it was not good and it was not a blessing to go and meet a prophet of God. A true man of God to go and meet him just empty handed like that. That it does not command honor. You don't honor God. You don't honor him. Are you getting my point now? And the king said unto Hazael. Listen. They wanted to. Go, they were looking for. This was. Um, this was. Um was it hezekiah now i believe whoever it was the king praise god <laughs> take a present are you seeing it now take a present in your hand where's my present take a present in your hand and go meet the man of god and inquire of the lord of him saying shall i recover from this disease the king told the man don't go and meet a man of god empty-handed he said, take something in your hand as a sign of honor 
Are you getting me? When it was time for Jacob to enter his proof, I mean for Isaac to enter, um, Isaac to now bless his sons. Is that true? The Bible says he told his son, go and make me venison. Bring something in your hand so that it will provoke a blessing from me. Are you getting what I'm saying? The king said, take something in your hand. Don't go and meet the man of God empty-handed. So we see there that that's the concept of prophet's offering. An offering, something that you hold in your hands to honor the grace of the servant of God. First Samuel 9 verse 3 to 13. I'll say it and we'll briefly touch the imbalances there and then we'll wrap up for, for today. First Samuel chapter 9 verse 3 to 13. This was the encounter. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. So something was lost. They needed a breakthrough in their life. Please listen. I want to teach you a powerful principle. There is still the law of seed faith. We are coming there. But I want to teach you one very powerful principle. And they were lost. So they needed a miracle. And Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with you. Arise and go and look for the asses. Verse 4. And he passed through the Mount Ephraim and passed so on and so forth and all of that. But they did not find it. Verse 5. And when they were come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come and let us return. Let my father leave caring for the asses and begin to take thought of us. Verse 6. Listen. He says, and he said unto him, Behold now, there is in this city a man of God. Everybody say a man of God. And he is an honorable man. He said, all that he saith cometh to pass. Now, let us go and meet him. So they were confused. They needed breakthrough in their life. Are you getting me now? This was Saul and a servant. And he said, let's go back. Our father will be worried. He said, no. In this city, there is a man of God. There is an honorable man who is able to solve our problem. He said, let's go and meet him. The word of the Lord comes to, to pass in his life. He said, Paradventure, he can show us our way that we should go. Verse 7. I want you to know that this was a culture that was practiced among the ancient. And that's why a lot of them got lots of blessings. Then said Saul to his servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring to the man? Are you seeing now? They knew that it was unlawful to go and meet a man of God just empty-handed to say, We have come to meet you. And, and all of that. He said, for the bread is spent in our vessel and there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? Verse, verse 8 now. And the servant answered Saul again and said, behold, I have here a ha in, at hand a fourth part of a shekel of silver that I will give the man of God to tell us our way. Are you following me? And so on and so forth and then they met a man and they brought the gift and he told them and he called he was an uh, he called Saul an anointed Saul are you getting what I'm saying so the concept of prophet's offering is simply a spiritual way of approaching a man of God with honor knowing listen knowing that God can use him to bless you and solve your problems now today in our day is the concept of prophet offering applicable absolutely it is applicable it's simply the law of honor whether you call it prophet's offering or whatever is simply the law of honor let me teach you something brothers and sisters it should not deter you that you don't have maybe money to give and you cannot go and meet a man of god now i'm aware that there are lots of men of god if you come and meet them and you don't have anything they don't hide it there is a basket or there is something nobody will even tell you as you are entering those who are taking you there will say Mr. Man hold your 30,000 there are even those who have put their bill they have suffered enough they said look I won't be foolish again prophecy 30,000 this and that and that and it's working for certain people they may not be necessarily fake but I think it's inaccurate are you getting my point money and anointing does not mix together people are supposed to do things out of revelation however on your own part i never go and meet a man of god higher than me without nobody comes to my house and not get something there must be something i must insist that you take something is the law of honor there are some of us who are fond of you know and please i hope you know that i'm not 
threatening you and say, start packing. God has blessed me. God doesn't owe me anything at all. Are you getting my point now? So don't think it's just some gimmicks to steal out money from people. No, no. My blessing is not tied to you. My blessing is tied to my practicing the kingdom principles. Imagine if God, if I was totally dependent on you for my blessing, I would have died by now. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. But God is faithful. Praise the Lord. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? I will never go and meet a man of God higher than me. Even if he's just to greet. Even if he comes into a city. There are men that I hear that just came into Zaria for a program. I'm not even related. I'll package something. Maybe a tie or wine or something. I'll say quickly, take it to that man of God. Just tell them I, went to, I, I want to greet them. Or sometimes I can just put recharge card quickly. One five or something. It's the law of honor. I've taught you this. Commanding results. It's the law of honor. If you've been doing it, stop it. Many of us, on your way to go and see a man of God, you branch a, a, a restaurant, Chicken Republic. You blow 5,000 there. You finish eating and you belt. You say, hey, by now, let's just go and see him. And you get up and come. And you even sit down. Sir, things are not changing. You say, God will bless us. And, you know, I'm not talking of me. It's, it's very bad. It's dishonoring. Very dishonoring. So while on one side, we don't just teach people that if you don't have a gift, it means the anointing will not flow. He will not bless you. That's erroneous. But let me encourage you. I want to encourage you. Have it as a spiritual culture. Beyond koinonia, you will provoke lots of things. There are places I go to minister and I tell you the way they treat me and the kind of honor they give me. I find out that there are unusual open heavens. Even certain things that I don't want to share, I find myself sharing it. A seed can provoke something in your direction when you honor people. He say, honor your father and your mother. He say, law, honor people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Many of you have never blessed a man of God. See, I say this, it's just because I have to teach you. You don't know how difficult it is for me to teach all these kind of things. Many of you have never we are here blessing you day and night. I've said it and said it. Some of you don't even know our birthdays. You don't even know my birthday to say, Kai, this person is doing all of this. Some of you try to call and I caught the call and for one hour you are just talking and rambling and making all kinds of noise and you are not wondering. You know, this very unemotional attitude. There are many families like that. They gather their whole family. We are coming for deliverance. We are coming for this. And the man just comes. Where do I sit down? And they sit down. The wife too sits down. Demons are disturbing us in this house. We had that. Uh, is it the, the deliverance ministry or what is it? And you know they are talking. It's very wrong. Very wrong. No man honored a man of God in scripture. And did not have anything. You are not buying the miracle. But I'm telling you it's a law. That will open you to dangerous dimensions of blessings. When Jacob brought the venison for Isaac. When he took up the venison, it provoked a blessing from within him. Hallelujah. I've shared with you my story on how I packaged a very dangerous seed and I left to Canaan land. Hallelujah. I went to go and honor God's servant here. I didn't get to meet with him, but I still went to practice that law of honor and without contradiction, the lesser is blessed of the greater. When I came out from there, praise God, when I came out from there, I was to enter the car and the Holy Ghost told me, come out. And I came out, he said, kneel down. I laid my hands there. He said, from today, every city you go, the heavens will be open to you. The same way you are seeing it there. So when you see a reproduction of certain things, understand that there are laws that work. There are people who keep criticizing because we are flying our shed. They just look, how are these people doing it? These guys, they must be fetish. That's why you see certain people bring judgment on themselves. You were not there when we were praying the price. But you now see the reward and begin to criticize. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are spiritual laws. There are spiritual laws. One of the reasons why this ministry will never go down 
is because we sow into your life. There are bosses here. You know, sometimes people ask me, they say, why do you spend so much money on bosses? You don't want to know how much we spend per week just on bosses, chairs outside and the rest. Sometimes I come and I rebuke the protocol people and I tell them, why are there some people standing? Go and get more chairs. Hallelujah. And they order dozens of chairs again and they still need more. I say, still go and get it. It's the law of honor. That I'm a man, I don't know what grace you carry. It's everybody sitting here, you are a bank of grace. It's a privilege that I'm standing here ministering to you. I will be foolish to believe that you don't carry something. Many of you are product of different anointings. Some people have spoken certain blessings into your life. As a ministry, we are humble enough to tap into it. And we tap into it by sowing into your life. Are you listening to me? When we wanted to contact the spirit of excellence as a ministry, we looked at Koza, the Commonwealth of Zion Assembly, and we looked at them and we found out that these guys had a level of excellence we wanted. We carried all the leaders, all the heads of departments and the ministers and myself. We went to Abuja. Some of you were there. We lodged in a very expensive hotel. It cost us so much, but it was the law of honor. Let me tell you, when we got to Koza there, we went and we humbled ourselves. Our head of department, media, went to meet their head of department and walked there. Our head of protocol went to meet their head of protocol and walked there. Are you getting me? Oh no. And of course, we cannot go empty-handed. We went there. When we finished everything, the pastors came and the senior pastor came. They just humbled themselves. I can brag and say, look, I'm a man of God. I'm, I, I'm seen on common demonstrations of the spirit. There is always something you do not have. You must learn how to receive it. And we went and we humbled ourselves there and they spoke to us. We have seen certain levels of excellence, but when we came back, we came with a spirit and an anointing. Many of you have missed out on many anointings because you dishonor men of God. You are not, see, the way many pastors suffer in many ministries. God blesses you. Ministers are here suffering, speaking over your life. Let me tell you, if you know how much research and the things we do to bring these materials, while you're sleeping, we're awake. The Bible says, he that ministers to you in spiritual things, you should minister to the person in carnal things. The carnal there doesn't mean fleshly. Make it a, a point, a duty in your life that everywhere you find yourself and there is a man of God there, practice the law of honor. As much as possible. Please don't feel bad from today to say, okay, you are coming to greet me. I don't have anything. Don't feel guilty at all. Are you getting me? But I'm teaching you. There are many people who don't have the means sincerely, but I'm teaching you is a law. Begin to practice it. Hallelujah. I'll never forget one time I went for a ministration in, in a particular city. I won't call it because there are so many people downloading the teachings. And I was so humiliated. Pastor, I felt so bad. I said, Lord, this is not fair. When I went to that city where they kept me, I was going to ask the people and say, please, where is a very good hotel here let me relocate and book for myself and stay i didn't come for slavery here to come and stay here for god's sake it was a horrible place when it was night one sister just entered quickly as if i'm going to sleep with her bam, bam, bam. she just pushed the drawer drop everything and ran away i said what is all this when she brought listen i'm trying to communicate a point she brought this whole thing and i just sat down i greeted her she didn't even answer dropped everything and then she sped out I opened it. They made indomie and one egg with la casera. I had spent that day. It was a very far city. I said, Lord, is it that I could not take care of myself? You have been faithful to me. What is all of this? I don't take indomie. I don't take la casera. Listen, I need to say this. If this is all I say, we'll, we'll round up now and pray. There are many of you who want to invite a man of God. Don't bring a man that your, your financial, if you cannot honor his grace, be patient. There are so many people that want to bring men of God. I want to bring this. We must bring this person. You are not ready to cater and take. You bring any man and humiliate him. You will bring war on yourself. I'm teaching you a powerful spiritual principle. I had to go and buy malt that night. I just bought malt. I took it. I gave thanks. And honestly, I was not offended. Praise God. 
the next day nothing there was no breakfast they didn't ask whether i'm fasting or i want to eat later they just came they say we have come the car they carried me they chartered one car at least do something presentable are you getting my point it was hot it was horrible i was humiliated i said goodness what is this oh god i said well lord i'm, I'm, I'm i went and it was a great meeting god blessed all the people i paid my flight ticket from here to the place and i did everything when i finished by afternoon they brought okra soup for me and something you know they just came and dropped it you know this this um this cooler this one that this small one that's what they just came and dropped and we have three or four pure water or something i said what is this i'm not exaggerating it was a humiliating experience and i spent three days there <laughs> on the third day when i was done i was happy i laughed do you know what happened I want to tell you the pain of many ministers and what has made some people to do certain things. Don't just sit down and criticize and say they are materialistic. What is on you is what controls the results around you. Please never forget this. The results around you do not fabricate themselves. The results around you are mirrors. They are a reflection of the kind, the level, the dimension of the grace that is upon you. So I can know the grace on you by looking at the possibilities in your life. I can know what grace has come upon you by looking at what changes. It is impossible to increase in grace and your possibilities remain the same. No. The testimonies that recycle around your life are an attest. They, are, they attest to the fact that this is the level and the extent of grace. Hear me. Every door can open. It just depends on the grace asking it to open. Everybody is a giver. It depends on the grace that asks them to give. Someone can refuse to bless you and yet carry a millionaire and meet someone else and say, give me the privilege of blessing you. Nobody is really stingy. The problem is that these possibilities don't happen in the earth dimension. They are realities that are finished in the realm of the heavens and only executed. The earth is a realm of execution. The same way your body is. The anointing and the grace on your life is what controls the possibilities around you. Please listen to me. His divine power. There are doors that have refused to open. The doors are not stubborn. The doors are only obedient to the last instruction. And since the anointing speaking to it is not that high, the door will remain obedient to the last instruction. The day a higher authority speaks, that door will open, I assure you. Please don't generalize challenges. Challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them. This is a message of hope for you to hear. Challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them. Even the king could not solve the hunger problem of Samaria. Here comes the prophet. He did not come to solve the problem. He said, ah, okay, I see that there is a situation. Everyone was hungry except the king and the prophet. He said, by this time tomorrow. Then a foolish man said, even if God will open the window of heaven, how will these things be? And he says, you will see it, but you will not partake of it. I believe in the power of God. I've seen what the power of God can do. Stop wasting your time trying to change things physically. Creation has never been disobedient. Creation is the most obedient entity you can find. The money you are looking for is not disobedient. There is an unction that calls it. If it's not there, it is authorized to leave you. Creation is obedient. When Noah was ready to open the ark when he opened the ark there was a grace that came on every animal by themselves the bible never said noah went to the wilderness to chase them animals with no higher intelligence they found their way to the ark if animals can find their way to the ark why should your destiny helper find it difficult to find you why should breakthrough find it difficult to noah just stood there and allowed the grace to walk 
You rest only when the grace works. Let me tell you, life is hard when you are working on your own. In this kingdom, we don't work with our hands. Our hands only help us to receive the grace. When it comes, you enter your Sabbath. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The power of God is the spiritual mechanism responsible. The signs and wonders that will happen in this place right now, the healings and the miracles and the breakthroughs, they will happen according as his divine power. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. The information is not that he was anointed. Look at the extent to which he was anointed. With the Holy Ghost and with power. He says he went about doing good. And healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. There are people inside. There are people outside. There are people standing. In such sacrifice. Waiting for God. It will be very wicked. To share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And tell everybody bye bye. Return back with your challenge. No. I want you to believe God tonight and insist Lord whatever will come upon me must come upon me whatever must change must change whatever must grow must grow whatever must die must die when there is no expectation it becomes wrong for God to visit you because one of the things that he gave men seven benefits given to man at creation one of it is the right to choose the will that God gave man is a fundamental right. It's not for Christians. Once you are a man, you were given the right to choose. Salvation, even at the detriment of your going to hell, was left for your choice. God will never, never, never violate your right to choose. I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing. I can only advise you, choose life. I said before you prosperity and poverty. I said before you success and failure. I said before you spiritual growth and, and a low level of spirituality. It's up to you to choose. I choose life oh, and everything that comes with it. I choose speed. I choose increase. I choose honor. I choose dignity. I choose open doors. I choose open heavens. It's a choice. And if you're a family man here, as for you and your house. You can't choose for the whole world, but you can choose for your house. That the favor of God can rest upon your life tonight. And that within the next one month, things will shift in your life in a way and a manner that will surprise you. If you do not believe these things exist, you are not a Christian. A Christian is not just one who is born again. A Christian is one who has submitted to the ideologies of the kingdom as the ultimate value system of your life. Hallelujah. I'd like you to believe God. Don't say I've come for miracle service before. You see, let me tell you the truth. My assignment as a man of God is not to invite you. My assignment as a man of God is to continue to grow in grace so that the things that would not answer to me in January must answer in June otherwise what is the superiority of growth if the same thing that did not answer to me three months ago refuses to answer now I'm only maintaining my spiritual level I'm not growing there was a time when some spirits did not answer to the apostles they went to Jesus asking a question and they said why couldn't we do this he said this kind there is a technology for taking this one out see let me tell you sincerely there is enough grace to wipe the tears in your eyes there is enough grace to turn the tables around the anointing works like money i've taught you it can only solve the problems that are lower than it the anointing does not generically solve every problem no no, you have to understand this. It's very important to know. I have, let me just steal five, ten minutes to explain this. Look at this. This is 1,000 Naira. Look at this. And if I give you this 1,000 Naira, it can buy a bottle of water. Is that true? It can even buy you lunch or dinner, depending on where you eat. 
but this cannot buy you a car. This cannot pay a child's school fees, but it is still money. So if you want to pay a child's school fees, you need more of the same thing to the level that meets the demand. Every challenge in life has a level of grace attached to it. Not every grace solves every problem. If every grace solves every problem, then it doesn't make sense to grow in grace. Acts chapter 2, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 4, they were filled with the Holy Ghost again. To what end? It says that you stretch forth your hands and that miracles, signs and wonders be wrought in the name of your Holy Son. There was a dimension of grace requiring a higher level of the anointing. Gehazi carried his rod, the rod of Elisha, and he came and laid it on the dead body. The body did not rise. But when the prophet came, that dead body came back to life. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. I know men of God have prayed for you. They are not fake just because you did not get the result. It is a reflection of the extent and the level of grace. And God grants the privilege of grace. And that's why as men of God, we must continue to grow in grace. So that what we could not solve yesterday, we can now solve tomorrow. That is the proof of grace. Are we together now? We are going to pray tonight. It's going to be a very quick walk in this place. I trust God and I believe that in the name of the Lord, that things will so change in your life, it will surprise you. Please rise up on your feet. Lift your voice and begin to mention specifics. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Rise up on your feet and please pray. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Yeah Oh yeah yeah say Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say my life around turn my life around tonight turn my ministry around turn my family around is someone praying turn things around shalabarata <laughs> katos Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to be very fast. I minister by the Spirit. And the goal is for God to solve people's problems and deal with all the issues that are not of God. Praise the Lord. It will be very, very fast. I'm not sure I may have the time to prophesy tonight because I want us to finish very fast. Our time is gone. But let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven. Please don't be used to your situation. If you're a visitor here and you came, come insisting that I did not leave where I left to be here only to return back with stories. Uh-uh. That is not the God that we serve. Are we together? Hallelujah. There are three people. The power of God is coming on outside. Overflow one. Please, I'd like you to bring them out here. Please, let's start very quickly. We're going to pray. Three people. The power of God is coming upon them right now. Three people, the power of God is coming upon them right now. A very strong anointing. Please bring them very quickly and then and then we'll pray. And then we'll pray. 
when you have them please bring them very quickly the Lord is already moving listen let me tell you the truth I want you to believe believe that God will step in and turn your life around hallelujah turn your life around from the back right to the center I'm seeing the power of God come on someone now from the back right to the center from the back right to the center please bring them out right now now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty there is liberty an end comes to every oppression an end comes to every oppression an end comes to every oppression an angel of the Lord is still standing here I'm still seeing this road right now it's like smoke just moving across right now from the top to the back please bring them out an end comes God is stepping in to locate people by his spirit remember the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit and it says where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty I command every oppression of darkness I want to pray now I see fire in this place this is what I'm seeing by the spirit of the and listen at the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus that every spirit that is other than the spirit of the Christ responsible for any challenge and any predicament it must let you go now inside and outside online are you ready father let there be deliverance right now one two three shout jesus jesus i cause every power bring them out right now every oppression of darkness it must go now it must go now oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh 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 Please bring them out quickly I'm still praying The Lord is showing me a vision of a padlock in the spirit I'm seeing a padlock and I'm seeing what looks like a key about to open it at the count of three again you're going to shout that name I see opening opening doors that have been closed are you ready now one two three be open now every closed door be open now be open now be open now, now. close doors over families Close doors over ministries. Close doors over destinies. I decree and declare, be open. Be open now. Bring them out, please. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. In the name of Jesus. Overflow one, two, three. Across the road online be free now hallelujah i'm seeing i'm seeing like stones in a vision one two three four five and i'm seeing like a strange fire these are representations of altars listen there are families that have been covenanted to all kinds of ordinances. Fire is about to come from heaven right now. In the name of Jesus, you are ready to shout now. Father, every family here that is under any kind of ordinance, I come tonight with the rod of a higher priesthood. At the count of three, let fire from heaven liberate that family right now. One, two, 
free. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus, we blot out handwritings. We blot out handwritings. Bring them out. I cause altars, yokes of darkness, ordinances, speaking against the people of God. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, say. Oh yeah, yeah, 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 Yahweh. Oh yeah, yeah, say. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the hand of God go to the eastern states. The eastern states. Right now God is bringing deliverance. The east, Abia, Anambra state, Enugu state, Eboi state. I'm seeing an anointing right now. Rest on people within that state. Let there be liberty right now. Let there be liberty right now. You belong to that state the power of God is coming upon you right now right now even the lawful captives shall be delivered it's a sign and a wonder how God does it I'm seeing the map the east God is bringing liberty hallelujah the Lord is showing me the map again I'm seeing an arrow and I'm seeing it Go to Benway, Benway State. Right now, I stretch my hands. Benway, Benway. That anointing you are from that state. Any ordinance tying your destiny must let you go right now. Must let you go right now. This is by the authority of the kingdom. Benway State. Benway State. Liberation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. release their destinies right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah I'm seeing fire just within this circumference in front there are two families God wants to set free right now within this circumference I'm seeing fire coming upon them right now bring them out right now by the spirit of grace in the name of Jesus the son of the living God things must change in your life my friend this young man lift your hands where you are there is oil being poured on your head right now right now in the name of Jesus the Lord is removing something that looks like an arrow from your head. Let it go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let him go now. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Fire is still falling here. I'm seeing this deliverance is especially for women. An entity comes to molest you in the night. You go to bed and a strange spirit just comes. Right now in the name of Jesus, the Lord is asking me to just count two. And at the count of two, that fire is coming on people right now. One, two, let that fire come now. Liberation from ordinances of darkness. Every stranger that comes to manipulate your destiny, be free now. All those in front here, I decree the power that holds you. I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. At the count of three, let them go now. 
One, two, three, go. Leave them now. Release their destinies. Right now. Let there be restoration. Everything that has been stolen from hell, I command a restoration by the spirit of the living God, by the spirit of grace. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Be free right now. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Everything that must leave your life, insist it must leave your life now. The angel of the Lord is removing arrows. I'm seeing arrows, arrows coming out of people. That's what I'm seeing. Arrows, 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 arrows right now. Right here, arrows, arrows, go now. Arrows are being removed out of people. In the name of Jesus, Madam, be free right now. Be set free now. The Lord is setting someone free here right now. Someone in this row, I'm seeing fire just resting on someone. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus, everything that has held you bound, be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Those outside, keep praying. Something is resting upon you right now. The Lord asked me to come to overflow one. I want to pray for you. There is an anointing right now. I stretch my hands. Fire from the front to the back. Everyone under any kind of yoke. Right now, as I'm passing, be free. Be free. Help them, please. Out. Now. Release their destinies. Release their destinies now. Please help them. Whether you are an usher or not, help them. That yoke must let you go now. That yoke must let you go now. I'm passing this road right now. Once I pass you, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is taking everything that is not of God. Release them now. Release their destinies now. Release their destinies now. Let that fire rest upon you right now. Everything that has refused to open, be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Close doors. Be open now. Be open now. Now listen, overflow two. I may not touch you, but in the name of Jesus, I pass your role. Except God is not God. If there is anything sitting on your destiny, it must let you go. Right now, be free. Be free. I bring you the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now. Open up your gates. Your gates. Gates be open. Destiny be open now. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open now in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Fire is resting on this road, just right here. I'm seeing someone, the oppression of your family is coming to an end right now. I stand by this grace. Karis Kobaru Katosh, help her please. Anyone here, anything that is not of God sitting on your destiny, right now at the count of three, all of you just, I'm seeing fire right now. And I'm seeing chains broken from people's legs. Right now be, be set free now. Be set free now. Be set free now. Be set free now. There is a lady here. God is saying it is over. Right now, I'm seeing an anointing liberating a lady's family right now. Help them, please. Whether you're an usher or not, please, if anybody's falling close to you so they don't injure themselves. Hallelujah. Please shift. That lady, be free now. I'm pointing my hands to her. I command that devil to leave your family and your destiny now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be 
Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Overflow three. Pray. Pray overflow three. Something is about to release your destiny now. Something is about to release your destiny now. Something is about to release your destiny now. Overflow three. I came with an anointing. At the count of three, shout Jesus. Fire is falling from the top to the bottom. One, two, three. Go, go, go now. Every yoke, every altar. Be free now. Bring them out. Whether you are an usher or not, bring them out. Every oppression of darkness, right to the back. I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be free now. Be free now. Bring them out. I'm seeing all kinds of spirits. I command every spirit that is not of the Christ. Release God's people right now. At the count of three. I'm seeing fire resting on people. And I'm seeing a number 41. 41 people. At the count of three, shout Jesus. Are you ready? One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Right now, be free by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Be free right now. Every door that has refused to open, I open that door right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are 27 people here. The grace for speed is coming upon them. I don't know who you are, but right now, the grace for speed. I stand by the anointing from the front to the back. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive that anointing right now. Speed, I release speed over your life, over your destiny. Receive speed in the name of Jesus. Speed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Overflow three, hear me. There are people here, the Lord is telling me, no one rises in your family. When they get to a level, something brings them bow. And the Lord is saying, I should shift you by prophecy. I stand right now, I don't know where they are, but the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm seeing the number 17. Lord, I don't know where they are here, but in the name of Jesus, I declare, move to the next level right now. I shift you to the next level right now. I shift you to the next level right now. Hallelujah. I'm looking at 14 people here. You have the call of God upon your life. And right now, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to locate you. 14 people. Lord, where are they? I stretch my hands right now. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, Deborahs. Lord, where are they? Let that man to locate you now. The call of destiny that is upon you. Oh, prophet of God, may that fire find you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are 15 people here. Overflow 3. The spirit of revelation is coming on you. Unusual insight. I don't know where they are. But right now I'm seeing light. Not fire. Light. Light coming on people. 15 people. Step into a new dimension of the revelatory grace. Right now in the name of Jesus. Now we hallelujah praise the Lord main auditorium please lift your hands main auditorium lift your hands I'm seeing seven people main auditorium lift your hands I'm seeing seven people the grace for speed I'll pray it on everybody 
but the main auditorium there is a grace for unusual speed on seven people they will begin to run by the anointing right now please hold them so they don't injure themselves main auditorium i stretch my hands at the count of three like elijah may that grace come one two three receive that grace right now in the main auditorium step into the anointing for speed in the name of jesus overflow three lift your hands every door that has refused to open over your ministry over your life held down by witchcraft in the name that is above all names at the count of three i'm seeing doors open in the spirit one two three let that door be open now be open now be open now the lord wants to avert death over a family this year alone between last year and this year four people have died in your family four people have died and in the name of jesus christ an anointing is coming upon you right now let death be averted now in the name of jesus now listen all of you at overflow three and the extension there whatever must live your life as i'm passing this place please i am releasing my faith open your mouth now and declare lord it must live my life now go ahead go ahead pray please all those in front here the spirit that ties your destiny i command at the count of three let them go now one two three go 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 out of their lives out of their destinies make sure you are praying make sure you are praying the power of God is resting on someone here there's an anointing coming on someone right here in the name of Jesus there's an anointing coming on someone here and the Lord is saying it comes to an end that family crisis comes to an end the power of God is resting on someone by my left here right now receive that anointing let it go in Jesus name Be free right now in Jesus' name. The power of God is resting on someone here. Right here, I'm seeing an anointing. Right now. It's a prophetic grace. There's someone here, a prophetic grace is coming upon you. Right now, by my left here. In the name of Jesus, drink of that anointing. Drink of that fountain. May that grace rest upon your life. Right now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord says it is over over right now by the power of the holy spirit look at me my friend the lord is taking you to a height and a dimension in the spirit i lay my hands on you drink of that grace in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ hallelujah i'm seeing what looks like smoke just this region where i'm where you're looking at me right now there are four people i'm seeing the power of god like a wind just coming on them just this road right now lord where are they I stretch my hands right now right now the power of the Holy Ghost is coming on those people and the Lord is saying it is over he's taking away captivity four of you by the spirit of grace let it be over right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus there is a family here marriage does not happen in that family but I'm seeing fire rest right now the embargo is being broken now. The embargo is being broken. Whoever those people are, an anointing is coming on you now. For the sake of your family, that yoke of marital delay is breaking right now. It's breaking right now. In the name of Jesus, please lift your voice and pray. Everybody, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. There is one of you among those standing here. There is a call of God upon your life. An anointing is coming upon you you will be mightily used by God where is that person spirit of the living God the hand of God just near the gate here the power of God is coming upon that person right now a new dimension in the spirit 
the eyes that see and the ears that hear may you step into that level in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ my friend touch this gentleman for me lift your hands I stretch my hands over you I command I'm seeing chains all over your body I command those chains to give way now in the name of Jesus release him now let him go now by the power of the Holy Ghost I cut those chains I'm seeing chains from your head to your toe let me pray for those here please all of you are here I'm the Lord is opening my eyes and from here to the fence I'm seeing snakes and I'm seeing five people there is a major deliverance that is coming for a family right now in the name of Jesus may the anointing of the Holy Spirit locate those ones now five of you right now these spirits my God my God I'm seeing something living right now release them now release no matter how long release them now it is written that even the lawful captives shall be delivered I declare emancipation now by the Spirit of the Living God. Come. Where are you coming from? Huh? You are a gala. I want to pray for you. Are you alone? If you came here alone, what do you do? I want to pray for you. The Spirit of death is upon you. And the Lord is saying I should pray for you. So that those dreams you used to have seeing dead people is that true you have dreams and Too much, yes. the lord is saying that you are going to be free from it right now i declare in the name of jesus by the power of the hope in the there is there is someone here hi academic delay over your family is breaking right now i just please don't be carried away acting this thing i Passionately to help people experience God. I'm praying. I don't know where that family is, but now scattered in this congregation, I stretch my hands. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit family right now. I'm seeing a family here. None of you has a job. None of you. There are even a few graduates, but nobody at all. It's like the doors of jobs don't open. Right now, you're going to sense fire come up your hands. Real physical fire. And the Lord is saying, by that, help them. By that, that embargo is broken. Lord, I, I declare right now, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit rest upon those people and bring emancipation. Everyone lift your voice and begin to pray in the Spirit. Please begin to pray in the Spirit. Don't say you are not inside. God can locate you from any direction. God can locate you from any direction. Bring me this lady, please. In the name of Jesus Christ, delay ends in your life. I stretch my hands and I pray. Delay, help her. The Lord is taking away witchcraft from this family. I command that devil, go now. See, it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside. Just release your faith. In the name of Jesus, be free right now. Be free right now. My friend, the call of God is upon your life. There is, that is coming upon you. It's a healing anointing. I stretch my hands, may that grace begin to work effectually. Now, step into that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, listen, among all of you from here to here, the grace for speed is coming on two people. Listen, those two people will start running now. Please hold them. Hold them so they don't enjoy themselves. That anointing right now, all across. Two you can't control yourself. Hold them, please. Whether you are an usher, or I release that grace. Speed, two people, strange speed. God is ending delay right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing two of you, a prophetic anointing. You are not prophets, but you have been desiring this grace. The grace to see from here right to where that lady with the veil is. I don't know where they are, but I stretch my hands. May that anointing find you right now. Accuracy of sight. Um, help them, help them, please. Help them, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. Name of Jesus Christ. Name of Jesus Christ. An angel of the Lord is taking away reproach. There is a family here. 
the Lord is saying the captivity ends now. An anointing is coming upon you right now. It's now. In the name of Jesus. Someone here, is it your sister has been trusting God for the fruit of the womb? Who is that? Listen, where, where is she? At home. What of you? Come. How long? Who has had three miscarriages? Three miscarriages. Go and tell her she will have a baby girl. That the Lord is giving her a baby girl. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you both. In the name of Jesus, let it come to an end right now. Let that captivity come to an end. In the name of Jesus, there's someone here, your family has a court. court case. Who is that, please? Court case. Don't make sure you don't tell us, please. They want to kill you because of what? What did you do? What did you do? Hold on, I have to. Where are you from? Where is that? I have to pray for you. You have bad friends. Hold on. Let me talk to you. Eh? You have very bad friends. Bad friends. You need to be delivered. This is not even your whole life. Eh? You know what I'm saying, right? You need to repent. Eh? Listen. When I make an altar call, run and come. Because the real salvation is you. It's not the issue of court case of this. You, you have friends that are criminals. And we have to pray. You hear what I'm saying? God is locating you to help you. Listen, let me tell you, my dear people, hear me. When God locates us like this, is because he wants to help you. There's somebody here. Your name is Sarah. Where is that person? Sarah. Hold on, please. Don't, don't. Let me just prophesy. I, I, my heart is full. God wants to visit people. Stand up. Who is Sarah? Where are you from? Huh? Where are you from? No, no. We're state of origin. I want to pray for you. Who is Godia? Yeah. Godia. The Lord wants to visit you right now. Acting God truly wants to change your life. Yeah? I want to pray for you. Whose mother is in the hospital? I'm seeing someone's mother lying down in the hospital here. Your mom? Come. I'm seeing lying down in Portacot. Port, uh, yes, I Portacot. You came from Portacot. Go on. I'm going to pray for Do I know you? I've never seen you. I want to pray for you. God is turning your situation up. Is, as you are standing, let your heart be open. Your people may be far. Don't ever think I'm just because I come outside like this to encourage you to let you know that you must not make it inside. You were. Are we together? The power of God is going to come upon you a loud shout. That will be the person I'll prophesy to right now in just those outside here. It's not something you can stand. This is a sign and a wonder from the Spirit of God. That's not the shout. The shout is coming. It's a loud shout. Please bring the person when that happens. That's the shout. Bring the person. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, lift your hands. Jesus, come. Do you? What are you doing? What do you do? Of God, your own church, you are assisting someone. You came here not just to receive a miracle for your mother, but you came to take fire. Stand up. Why you came? Listen to me. You are going to go back and you will step into a dimension of signs and wonders that will surprise you. Sarah, in the name that is above all names, every oppression over your family, I come against it right now. I'm still hearing that name, Godia. Who is that? Hold on, please. 
Hold on. Where are you from? Huh? You are from Kat Saminaka. Hold on, please. Your sister. Blood sister. Same father, same mother. You've been praying for God to locate you. It's okay. You. Hi. The spirit of death is over your family. Huh? I'm dreaming of it. That's what I'm saying. I'm seeing you dreaming and dreaming of dead people. They will come and they are calling you. Sometimes they are saying you should eat together. This is the spirit of death coming on the family. But in the name of Jesus, I use them as a point of contact. If there is anybody under the sound of my voice that the spirit of death is coming upon you, help her. I cut the spirit now. Name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a family. Money does not stay in your house. No matter what happens. Once resources enter. You love God. But resources. Something must happen. Either sickness. Or they will steal it. Or something will come up. I'm seeing what looks like a blue flame. And it's resting on at least five people. And the Lord is saying an end comes to financial hardship. Father where are they? Right now I stretch my hands. Let that anointing locate you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please lift your voice and begin to pray. My friend, lift your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. An end comes now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please lift your voice and pray in the spirit, everyone. My dear, look at me. I command that spirit to leave you now. Of darkness must let you go in Jesus' name. Lift your voice and pray, everyone. Please pray. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Please pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit, everyone. Madam, help this woman so that she doesn't fall with it. I command everything that is not of God to let you go now. Release this woman's destiny now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oppression leaves right now. Someone here, there is a spirit that has oppressed your family. It must go now. I command that devil of darkness, help her please. That spirit must leave now. In the name of Jesus. Please everyone pray in the spirit. Everyone pray in the spirit. God is visiting us right now. One media person here. There is an anointing resting on someone. The Lord is bringing to end the captivity on your family. I'm seeing it by the spirit of God. Captivity coming to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Let it end now. By the spirit of the living God. Let it end now in the name of Jesus. My friend. I'm seeing what, what looks like a towel on you. And the Lord is wiping away infirmity. In the name of Jesus. Infirmity. Let it go right now. Please make sure you are praying. In the name of Jesus the son of the living God. The spirit of death. There is a family here. That spirit must go now. The spirit of death. Release them now. In the name of Jesus. Release them now. Release them now. The spirit of death. There will be no obituary. I command that devil to go now. Madam, excuse me. Madam, look at me. Come. Are you a man of God? Come. You too. Please come. I don't know you. Where are you coming from, sir? Where do you, what do you have to do with Adamawa? Is it Anambra? Huh? Who is from Anambra? Me. From Anambra State. You came all the way. Ah. There is a grace to see that God is going to be delivering to you. Number two, there is speed in ministry. That God, I don't know you, sir. I've not seen you. You're, you're together. You're a man of God, too. You're a man of God. You're a ministry. Can I pray for you, sir? Because I'm seeing this anointing, strange anointing come on you. You will go back and it's going to be fire all the way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this man of God. Step into that grace.
in the name of Jesus the anointing of the Holy Spirit you will never be the same can I pray for you sir by the anointing of the Holy Ghost drink of this wine you will never be the same in the name of Jesus the Son of the Living God mommy let me pray for you hold on please please stand up stand up who is Jennifer 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 the Lord is visiting the Jennifer I'm seeing you are outside you are holding a child Jennifer Jennifer is there someone like that oh please oh, confirm I what's your name they always confirm before you are Jennifer, them. Sir. Jennifer is this your child yes sir where are you coming from from this is my state huh from GRA no no where, where are you coming Kaduna State Kaduna State I want to pray for you so that the spirit that makes marriages to not work in your family will not catch up with you. Does Amen. it make sense what I'm saying? Yes, I want to pray for you. Well, this boy has a great destiny. Forget about whatever it is that has happened or not happened. I want to pray for you. The Lord located you to bless you. What's his name? Fortune. 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 Yes, I will pray for you. Mama, where are you coming from? I come from Togo. You came from Togo? Yes, just yesterday. Just yesterday. Yes. What are you trusting God for? Ah, my daughter in America. She's the one that sent me to you. She has been seeing you in her dream. You have done so many things for her in the dream. Then she said that I must come so that to me you will locate her. She's asking for contract. That is contract that she's seeking for. She... Just calm down, madam. You came all the way from Togo. Yes, sir. Let me tell you what God will do in your life. First, not even just your daughter. Eh? Leave your daughter's issue. God is going to bring your daughter but it's you first that back pain Jesus. Huh? that back pain that you have you get up in the morning and there's severe back pain that back pain will leave you now that's number one number two the dead people you see in your dream huh? sometimes you go to bed and you see dead people people who have died but they are alive talking to you i need to pray for you and then number three god is going to visit your daughter tell her the month of august is a month of breakthrough in the name of Jesus, be free right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here, please? Sir? You are a teacher. Did you apply for a job? Yes. Where? Uh, uh, Dambo International. Because I'm seeing a letter and I'm seeing congratulations. It, hold on. Ah, you are a teacher. Yes, sir. Where? With uh, KHMS. What is Dambo International? It's a school. Did I you know. apply there? Yes. Like I'm seeing that they are going to give you a job. Yeah. Huh? I will pray for you, sir. Because this teaching you are doing is only for a while. There is a grace of entrepreneurship upon you. And that grace is going to come and God will shift you to a dimension. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. How many children do you have? One. Just one. Yes, sir. I have one now. No, hold on. Don't be embarrassed, eh? I'm seeing one child, then the vision changes, and I'm seeing two again. Huh? You have one, you have two. What is the mystery? Explain. Before I married her, I have a son outside. Okay, before you married her, you have a child. The, yes, sir. Okay, I want to pray. Don't, don't make sure you treat the child with honor and grace. All the children that came out from you, are great children you understand please don't fight that child eh, madam you hear what I'm telling you yes I know that we live in a, a society that sometimes all kinds of troubles can come but may God grant you the grace to manage things well sir there is a grace of wealth that is upon you please look at me it looks like you're a teacher but your destiny is not a teacher you are a real kingdom financier and there is a grace for finances that should come upon you please look at me you see this woman she's a good woman don't ever let the devil use the face of any devil and use her face to make it look as if this is an evil woman and don't let any prophet anywhere tell you this woman is a witch in the name of Jesus I tell you God gave you a good woman she's a good woman madam you're a good woman in the name of Jesus let me pray for you sir please hold my hands in the name that is above all names I open up every closed door over your life and destiny 
I shift you to that realm of wealth in Jesus name the person look up please the person who comes to molest you when you sleep it comes to an end now in the name of Jesus every fraternity with darkness is gone now and gone forever in the name of Jesus I don't know why, why are they here who is Sarah are you married we are not more together huh I have two children, but we are not together with you. You are Father. not together with your husband. Yes. Were you married? No. This is what I'm saying. Come. You need to be delivered, eh? If not, I'm seeing four children. You will add two more, and yet you are not married. I'm not, I hope you are not feeling bad. I hope you are not embarrassed. God reveals so that he can redeem, eh? You are not a bad woman. You are not an immoral woman. It's a spirit. You hear what I'm saying? Come, let me pray for you. The power of God is coming on one of you here. One of you standing here now. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming on one right now. It's not something you can resist. I'm, this, I'm seeing it in the spirit that the power of God is going to come upon one of you. And when that happens, then I'm going to prophesy to that one person. Right now, it's an anointing from heaven that is coming upon one of you here. And the Lord is saying that he's taking away sickness from the midst of you. Taking away sickness. My dear, in the name of Jesus, is it the same man that has the children? Yes. Huh? Yes. Why doesn't he want to marry you? He didn't pay for my dowry. He didn't pay for your dowry? Yes. Go and tell him that I said he should pay for your dowry. Huh? Dowry is not building project. He should pay for your dowry and give these children a chance. Please. At this level, it's no longer about their comfort. The children need a father. May God grant him grace and give him money to pay your dowry and be a good man in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing written in the air, polygamy. God is breaking that spirit now. No, 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 just please just keep quiet. I'm ministering. There is a spirit of polygamy. Everybody in that family, you can't do with one man alone or one woman alone. That anointing is locating people right now to break the spirit is a covenant it's not a desire coincidences continue to put themselves together to lead people to trouble right now that spirit please help them in the name of Jesus inside outside everywhere the spirit of polygamy is being broken right now the spirit of polygamy is being broken right now sir let me pray for you where are you coming from sir Port Harcourt what do you do to business you do business but things are not going well huh if i don't pray for you i'm seeing you in the court because of money debt huh i hope you're not embarrassed you came here so that i pray for you what are you trusting god for i'm trusting god for breakthrough in my business breakthrough in your business first your my wife um, has listened to your tape for about seven days now and the last dream she had you came to pray for her and she insisted that you come through the night today I will pray for you more than business breakthrough sir is your relationship with God do you understand please don't be embarrassed but your relationship with God in this kingdom we prosper as our souls prosper not at the detriment of our soul so that there's, there's too much spiritual distraction around your life I pray that God will cause your heart to love him more than money in the name of Jesus and that in so doing he will bless you and lift you I decree and declare, I don't know why all of you came, but in the name of Jesus, I declare that everything that is not of God leaves you right now. Where is this lady from? Come, where are you from? I'm from Nessera Ostage. You are from where? Nessera. How many are you? I'm from extended family. We are many. Plenty. You are plenty. Yes. You don't know how many. Yes, but how? in my mother's side, we are eight. Two have gone. We are six now. Are you married? No. The man coming around your life I drive him from your life now and forever. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. The man that I'm seeing, I drive him in the name of Jesus, the Son Amen. of the living God. He will go back and you'll be surprised. He will tell you there's no time. He cannot call you. He's busy. Just know that God drove him from your life to save you from trouble. Are you ready for a child now? Tom, you have to be careful. Huh? I send him again in the name of Jesus Christ. 
before he destroys your innocent life. What do you do? I'm learning salon. Huh? I'm learning salon work. You are, I'm not here. I'm learning salon work. Hairdressing. Yes, sir. I'll have to pray for you. Come. Huh? I place favor on your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord help you in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray for the sick shortly, but the Lord is showing me a very serious vision. I'm looking at people, but I'm not seeing a face. And this is not the first time I see these kinds of vision. The moment I see these kind of things is a sign that, you know, the devil has just tried to tarnish the glory of people. The Bible says to not let your good be evil spoken of. There, there is a way that you are good, but it's like people continue to misunderstand you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Sakato I stretch my hands. I'm seeing an anointing coming on those people. That veil that covers your face, always putting you in trouble. I tear off that veil now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our time is gone. We have to be fast. Now, please listen very carefully. God is touching everyone, every single one under the sound of my voice. Three things will happen right now. Number one, make sure you are here with your prayer request. If you are not here with it, please pen down. It's an act of faith very quickly. What you're trusting God for, lift it up. Let the ushers have it. Number two, we're going to minister to the sick right now. We'll do it very, very fast. And then I'll pray on it and we'll prophesy. Open doors for everyone. We have to make this very, very fast. Are we together? While you are doing that, please be praying in the spirit. There are people here who are trusting God for themselves and their families. Please listen. Let's listen outside, inside. Let's listen to the instruction. Please. All those who are standing, trusting God for fruit of the womb. Whether you are in overflow, one, two, three. I want to pray for you myself. Are we together? Particularly for those trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And, but then aside from that... Um, Overflow 1, please listen, listen. From the start of Overflow 2, that means the end of CGC, and inside here, that's Overflow 2. Um, overflow 3 is from the end of CGC down to second Equa. Okay, you are Overflow 2B. Let's call it 2B. Are we together? Then the overflow from the beginning of this fence down right down there we'll call you overflow 2c please listen then there's overflow 3 i don't know if you understand what i'm saying this is the main auditorium this is overflow 1 this is overflow 2 then from this place down to second equa is overflow 2b from that same place down is overflow 2c so that so that you would know if you are trusting God, no matter what overflow for the fruit of the womb, I'll pray for you. But then all who are in here, overflow one, I mean overflow here, please, you're trusting God for healing, come stand here. Overflow one, come and stand in front of your projector stand. Overflow two, stand in front of your projector stand. Overflow 2A, please create a space for them there. Overflow 2A, create a space for them there. And then overflow 2C, stand in front of your projector stand and then overflow three you can stand in um in front of your projector stand those online connect by faith and then we'll pray we'll pray with you we're going to do this very fast we thank god there are many hands today and while they minister to you i would like you to believe god for a miracle you're a man of god you're a ministry here open up your heart and connect you are trusting god for the grace for signs wonders Make sure that you connect. The worship team will be leading us through powerful sessions of worship while we do that. And concurrently, while that is happening, please make sure you submit your prayer request. Everyone, make sure you pen down your prayer request. And then we are going to pray on it and let the God of heaven visit us right now. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Um, a Jimmy and promise and bishop manasseh ejimi and promise and bishop manasseh will do overflow three there are quite a number of people there overflow three um benga will do overflow two 
overflow two pastor alpha and ima you do overflow one um overflow one we need a way of reaching overflow kenny kenny will do overflow to be overflow to be will do overflow to be and then isaac isaac in media you do overflow to see let's make it that way praise the lord father we stand under this corporate grace and we decree and declare in the name of jesus that as we minister to everyone across let your healing power touch deliver set free in the name of jesus do this and be glorified even by the power of the holy spirit please we'll do it very very fast and while you are seated make sure you are agreeing releasing your faith in the name of jesus madam you lift lift your hands you this woman no the one wearing blue and white yes lift your hand i'm seeing oil coming on your head and the lord is saying he's taking away reproach and he's lifting you this is what i'm seeing an anointing is coming on you right now and the lord is saying he's taking away reproach and he's bringing an oil of gladness upon your life in the name of jesus father let there be miracles signs wonders in the name of jesus christ amen let's stretch your hands to the prayer request begin to pray in the spirit lord you are the god that answers prayers i decree and declare in the name of jesus pray over these requests he said these egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever there is a covenant of answered prayer in this place lift your voice and pray father i decree and i declare i prophesy i proclaim by the spirit of grace that this is a representation of the pain of people a representation of their hunger when the lord turned again the captivity of zion are you praying decree and declare that everything written here in the name of jesus will become a testimony everything written here we invoke the power of the holy ghost upon every request here supernatural deliveries terminations of delay open doors new spiritual dimensions in the name of jesus admissions graduations jobs marriages children restoration advancement promotion in the name that is above all names we decree and declare make sure you are praying make your declaration this that are brought before the god of all flesh will never 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 return as a disappointment i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit those online joining us from all over the world connect in the name of jesus from america to asia the uk canada everywhere we decree and declare that your requests are turned into testimonies in the mighty name of jesus christ listen I want you to understand that this is not a ritual this is a mystery are we together now there are all kinds of testimonies that have come in i can prophesy and there is so much i can be limited i cannot discern everybody's expectation but this is a representation of your hunger is a representation of your tears and let me tell you this please don't get familiar with this this is not some some spiritual thing just for the fun of it there is power in what we are doing it's guided by understanding is guided by an anointing and god has a covenant is protected by his jealousy in the name of jesus paul said for this cause i paul bow my knees before the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you in the name of jesus i declare upon you that the egyptians you see today that you will see them no more forever in the name of jesus every request here that is a death sentence cancer hiv and any kind of incurable disease we turn it around right now in the name of jesus 
every impossible situation represented here may the God of wonders arise tonight in the name of Jesus and do wonders by the power of the Holy Ghost for those of you who have submitted these requests on behalf of your loved ones I declare may the angel of God's presence these angels that do not know time and distance may they go to your various homes and to your loved ones and birth supernatural solutions in the name of Jesus Christ we decree and declare that you remain above this challenge forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I declare over your life we are entering the second half of the year it says revive thy work O God in the midst of the year I decree and declare every spiritual weariness every prayerlessness it dies right now in the name of Jesus passion for the things of the spirit like never before hunger for spiritual things in the name of Jesus I declare prayer fire like never before let it rest upon your life now I decree and declare an appetite for God and the things of God I declare you receive it right now I pray over your life every long-standing issue you have prayed you have fasted you have sought counsel it has refused to change in the name that is above all names I decree and declare by this time next month return with your testimony by this time next month return with your testimony please believe it don't just shout amen believe it I come against patterns you have seen it in others you saw it in your father you saw it in your loved ones you saw it in your siblings now it's beginning to happen by the blood of the eternal covenant I cancel every pattern now I cancel every pattern now it works for everybody until it gets to your turn then something happens you will see it but you never possess it I declare right now that spirit that makes you to see things and never step into it is caused by the God of heaven caused by the God of heaven everything that was given to you in the realm of the spirit already I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead this month coming it must enter your hands I declare that it must enter your hands there are families where is the women that feed the men have you seen such families no matter how hard-working the men are they never feed the family they get up in the morning and play draft from morning till night while the women go to fend it's an anomaly I declare by the Spirit of God I'm praying for the men now the grace for establishment and the grace to be satisfied early receive that anointing right now it says satisfy me early I'm saying it again everybody here who is a man and it looks like the devil wants you to depend on people for the rest of your life I decree and declare like Jacob Laban must let you go in the name of Jesus I pray for every Mordecai here you have been good to others you have been good to kings your records have been written but you have not been rewarded in this season by the Spirit of God we open a book of remembrance in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah anyone here called jobless by the God of heaven between now and the next three months like the ark of God in the house of Obed Edom 
I decree and declare jobs that will be consolations to your years of pain. May my God give it to you. Every dying business, hear the word of the Lord. I don't care what has happened. By the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, I speak to you, come back to life now. Come back to life now. Everyone who is in ministry here, no matter what level there are dimensions, I pray for you. You will go back to your various churches, fellowships and assemblies and a dimension of fire, a dimension of insight you have never seen, receive in the name of Jesus. Everyone here called barren by the God of heaven, in the name of Jesus, according to the time of life, return with your children. These are not empty prophecies. Believe them. They are backed up by the jealousy of God. They will come to pass. In the name of Jesus. I don't know where the helpers of your destiny are. But in the name of Jesus, every man who must arise in this season for your sake, to favor you, wherever they are around this globe, by the spirit of grace, I call them to your life now. I call them to your life now. The Bible says that strangers shall feed your flock. It says your gates shall be open continually. It shall not be shut day nor night that you will receive the forces of the Gentiles. People you do not know, I compel them to be interested in your lifting. In the name of Jesus Christ. I prayed a prayer like this one time. And one of us, God just opened a door. And a bank met him to sell a property for them worth 450 million naira. Listen, it doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. There is the creative dimension of prophecy. That can order things in your life every area of struggle i stand by the god of heaven who is called ebenezer the god of jeshuron in the name of jesus receive help from the lord i want to pray for people who have ideas and have projects but it seems to never go out of the book you have ideas you have projects it's just to connect you with somebody who has the interest nobody helps you on their own they are called by prophecy in the name of jesus right now i connect your ideas to your helpers in the mighty name of jesus christ I forgot to pray for those who are in the various institutions writing their exams. I know that many people had started their exams. Some have written. And the honest truth is that some of you have written nonsense. You need the mercy of God. In the name that is above all names. Much more than what you have written. In the name of Jesus. May the mercy of God show up in your exams. There is a dimension of finances that comes by prophecy. Please pay attention. Our time is gone, but I want to speak this into your life. There are people who are not very smart. The prophetic dimension is not a license to not be valuable. The prophetic dimension is a system of advantage to bridge tragedy while you learn. It's a system of God's mercy. It would be foolish to believe that wealth is only by principles. There are laws and there are irrefutable principles that make for the foundation. But there is the ordinance of prophecy. 
in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God the God who has helped me by his grace the God who has helped this ministry I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit between now and the end of July may your finances turn around in a way that will surprise you may your finances turn around in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those who are under any kind of project building project whatever it is the hand that started that project is the same hand that must finish that project in the name of Jesus Christ everyone here due for promotion but has been kept because of the wickedness and the sentiments of men go back into your next level in the mighty name of Jesus Christ finally I want to pray for you honor is the ability to discern to celebrate and to reward a man for his uniqueness it's not enough for your value to be discerned you must live a rewarded life you will be frustrated if you do not live a rewarded life i pray for you the eyes that can perceive and can discern your value i connect you to those eyes in the name of jesus Any pit you have found yourself in I must pray this financially whatever it is you have found yourself in a situation where only God can bring you out may that God you believe in bring you out of it now in the name of Jesus finally I want to prophesy again the grace for this year's prophetic word the Lord declared that it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Every part of that prophecy that is yet to speak in your life, by the force of right words and by the power of the, no the name that is above all names, I declare to you, may your life experience extraordinary fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ may you return with testimonies some of you this night before you get to your homes your phones you will see text messages that are full of wonders in the name of Jesus Christ father we give you all the praise we bless you because you have honored this house you have made it a place of answers you have made it a place of strange testimonies. Let everything that you have done tonight by your spirit return as testimonies. Let it not just be a ceremony. In the name of Jesus, we declare by the spirit of the Christ, testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, very quickly, I will make an altar call and then we'll take a few very important announcements and we're done. I apologize, our time is gone. You are here in this place. Please, let's minimize movement, especially outside. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I've not given my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I need to encounter his salvation and his mercy. Please listen. Or you are here, you are saying, man of God, I've seen the wonders. I once gave my heart to the Lord. But as it is right now, I need mercy. I need grace. I need to start afresh. You are here inside overflow one two three and all the other annexes i want to give you five minutes you want to make it right with jesus wherever you are i want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand right here it'll be my joy to lead you to jesus christ don't wait for someone be the first i'll count one to five wherever you are please start running clear the way for them please outside one quickly quickly please if you're coming run quickly run to jesus two win that war today win that war today win that war today the bible says in the day that you hear his voice do not harden your heart as they did in the provocation in the wilderness three someone is still coming apostle i'm not sure if i'm born again or not join them very quickly 
Join them very quickly. I expect people to come from outside. Please clear the way for those coming from outside. Clear the way for those coming from outside. Overflow. One, two, three. If you're coming, don't be sluggish. Run very quickly. We're out of time. Run quickly. Run quickly. We're out of time. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed and afraid of my colleagues and contemporaries. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Give them a big God bless you whilst they come. Takes a lot of courage, but win that war. Young and old, run to Jesus. The Bible says, ye must be born again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to salute all of you. Thank you so much for coming to make this decision. Lift your right hand high to heaven and say this after me. You're not reciting a poem. This is from the depth of your heart. Jesus is here. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you, that you are the Son of God. I have seen your wonders, and I declare that I need you. This night, I declare that you are my Lord, you are my Savior, you are my King. I receive your life, I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. I am a child of God, I'm changed forever. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, I present to you the ones you died for I thank you because when you hung on that cross they were worth your blood they were worth the tears they were worth the death I pray in the name of Jesus according to scripture your sins are forgiven and the grace to walk in victory is released upon you right now in the name of Jesus I decree and declare forever you go from glory to glory even by the Spirit of God everything that is not of God I come against it right now the grace to live victorious is released upon you. From today, you go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I congratulate you. I salute you. Very quickly, everyone in concert, I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands and you will have a few people. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.